Warning, some of the scenes in this video are graphic and intense. If you play for the visiting team, you have nothing to fear, as long as you have plenty of coverage. Major medical and dental suggested. We were born during a land run, celebrated triumph and tragedy. And through the years, we've been united by one common bond, football, Oklahoma football. In every great era, a champion is born. And for some, champions are a way of life. 1950, 1955, 1956, 1974, 1975, 1985. In every generation they come, Sooner champions, teams that gel under strong leadership, performing boldly under pressure, saving their best for the right moment. Three Heisman Trophy winners, six national championships, 122 All-Americans. For Sooners, defeat is not an option. Get ready for another Oklahoma land drive. Rock, y'all. No, no, stop, y'all. To the beach, y'all. Body rock, y'all. To the beach, y'all. Stadium and Owen Field. This is Oklahoma football. <laughs> Triple digit temperatures in Norman, Oklahoma. Makes no difference. A sellout crowd is on hand for the opening of the 2000 season. From Oklahoma's Memorial Stadium on the campus of the University of Oklahoma, Norman, Fox Sports Net Southwest presents Sooner Football. This evening, University of Texas at El Paso Miners face the Oklahoma Sooners. Hi, everyone. I'm Bill Land, along with Dean Blevins. I don't know what we're doing with these coats on. You got the best seat in the house as long as you got AC. But the folks that have shown up here are going to be treated to an offensive show that might have something to do with that 100 degrees. Yeah, but you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there were 100 passes thrown in this ballgame. Oklahoma looks to throw perhaps 50, and UTEP is up this year. They're thinking 30 or 40. But if they get behind, as the odds makers say they might, maybe they go for 50. So uh, we may get our money's worth. UTEP is not the UTEP of old. Five and seven a year ago, new head coach Gary Nord, former Oklahoma assistant. We'll get into that a little bit later. Got an offensive guy to make it happen, though, and Rocky Perez, their quarterback. Rocky is the guy who split time a year ago with Jay Stuckey, who was a better passer. But Perez got a lot of experience. He didn't throw many interceptions. He's a guy that will sit back in the pocket. He's tough. Now he has the whole weight of the program on his shoulders alone. Now, on the University of Oklahoma side, you might say something about Josh Heupel that hadn't been said, although I don't know what it could be. Can he top his year from a year ago? Well, his numbers were staggering, but in terms of what he's done in the offseason, he's improved his numbers. His 40-yard dash time is better. His vertical leap's better. His body fat is down. Everything that he's done, Bill, is better, and he looks to have a much better season. He's a terrific leader. The players just love him. He's a great guy for them to uh, cling to. He does a great job of the line of the scrimmage, so if he does has a better year, Oklahoma will have a better year. All right, we look forward to it, and let's get set for the kickoff as Oklahoma and UTEP. Let's send it down to our sideline man, Gary Reasons. Well, Bill, you said it was hot down here. Take a look at this thermometer. It's over 100 degrees. It's actually cooled down a little bit over the last few minutes from 110 to about 100 degrees. It's really hot down here. It's not going to stop these players, though. You guys talked about the offensive side of the ball. One of the most important things tonight might be the defensive side of the ball. UTEP, they returned six starters of that defense, and they're actually changing from a 4-3 system to an eight-man front, trying to actually create a team to throw the ball a little bit more. Now, for Oklahoma, they returned eight starters of their defense, and they're looking to have a superlative season this year. Bob Swoop knows that their defense has to play well if they're going to do well in the South in the uh, the Big 12 this season. Bill? All right. Thank you very much, Gary. And we're ready for the kickoff. And thank goodness for the two teams. The shadows from the press box side have covered the field. So they'll be able to play in at least a little bit cooler conditions. Oklahoma will receive the kickoff. 
And UTEP with Ricky Bishop to boot it away. And Oklahoma is going to get excellent field position as the Sooners will trot out in great field position to open things up here in the year 2000. Sooner quarterback Josh Heupel will bring it out for Oklahoma. As they meet on the sideline, Heupel, senior from Aberdeen, South Dakota, last year threw for 30 touchdowns and just 15 interceptions and 3,466 yards. Out of the shotgun. Heupel on first and 10, plenty of time. Incomplete, looking for Andre Wolfolk to try to get things off the get-go. Wolfolk, a sophomore from Denver, Colorado. So the Sooners now, second down and 10 throw you on the 48-yard line of Oklahoma. Good news for the Sooners there. The offensive line, the big question mark offensively, did a nice job, but so did the coverage for UTEP. Second and 10, again out of the shotgun for Hyper. Bertram to center, snaps it. Ball is deflected at the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure if that was Randolph. One of the front four from UTEP, but appear got one of those paws up there, Dean, to knock it away. And it'll be third and 10 now for the Sooners. Well, and again, good protection, Bill, but you've got to have the passing lanes open. And that time, the defender, and I believe that uh, Clark was the man, got his hands up and swatted that one down. So all of a sudden, third and 10. From the 48 again of OU. Hypo with the trail beside him in the backfield. Trips there left, Bill on top. Hypo looks that way in trouble. Dumps it an incomplete. And the UTEP defense that was built to stop the one oriented, oriented offenses in the whack has a very successful run on a three and out for Oklahoma as the Sooners will bring on their punter, Jeff Ferguson, to kick it away. The, the good news is if there can be some, is it, they should be able to pin that pretty deep here, deep. Yes, uh, that is the good news, but uh, that first series didn't show much. It showed that uh, UTEP is prepared, maybe not intimidated, and that uh, they are ready to play some some coverage in the secondary. They didn't get a rush on Bill, but they did a nice job on all three downs in coverage. Javier Sanchez is the deep man at the 10. Signals fair catch and does it falling short of the 20 yard line and that's where UTEP will take over. So the Miners got to be pretty pleased after the poor opening kickoff situation. They end up getting the football near the 20 yard line and stopping Oklahoma most importantly. In a game like this, the coaches on both teams are looking for their teams to be sound. They're looking for them to have good communication, but specifically defensively here and talking with Mike Stoops, the co-coordinator, along with Brent Venables, that's what they're looking at here. Good adjustments, good communication, and to try to make UTEP become one-dimensional. Chris Porter lines up as the tailback behind the quarterback, Perez. Look for the tight end napkin, an all-whack pick. The end around, and Mays fumbles it recovered by Oklahoma. Sooner football. I believe Corey Heineke came up for the loose football. Lee Mays never had the handle, though. Mays, an outstanding receiver, you would think would have great hands. Let's see what happened, Dean. Bill, I think this play was set up perfectly. Heineke is beaten on the play. If Mays holds on to that ball, he might have a big play. Sooners converge, Heinke turns what could have been. You see Bob talking to Heinke right there, pointing to your head saying, think, don't get lulled in. Great play call on UTEP's part. Oklahoma takes advantage of the break, at least defensively, and we'll see if they can offensively. Heinke, the junior from Edmond Santa Fe, a guy who's known for his consistency, comes up with the big play. First at 10, Oklahoma and Heupel ready to throw it again. Got his man inside the five-yard line. Complete, and the Sooners will have it first and goal to go. Josh Norman on the reception, the junior from Midland, Texas. Josh to Josh, roommate to roommate, flag route, perfectly executed. Not much space in there to throw that football. And the best thing about Josh Heupel on the field in terms of his play is his accuracy. Great exhibit there. 
15 yards on the pickup, and it's first and goal for the two-yard line. Oklahoma on the ground, down inside the one. No signal yet, though. Latrell, Seth Latrell, senior from Muskogee, Oklahoma, 5'11", 221, carrying the football. Last year, he averaged six yards per carry and scored seven times on the ground. Oklahoma wanting to push this ball into the ground, into the uh, end zone, Bill, on the ground. Be a great opportunity to establish some type of ground game, if you will, because that's what they're looking to improve upon. Last year, Oklahoma only averaging 105 yards per game on the ground. Second and goal. Heupel tries to push it in. Nothing yet. I believe he's in on that one. He's behind Touchdown. Bubba Bertram. Yeah. Sellout crowd will let you know, won't they? So Heupel gets his opening touchdown on the ground. As a quarterback, Bill, in this situation, you love the play call. You know, coach, give me a touchdown because virtually anyone can do that. You have big Bubba Burcham up front, 285. You've got Basinger next to you at over 300. Skinner at 299. And the Sooners do indeed get a touchdown on the ground. Fletcher on to hold and the kick by Duncan. Up and good. Tim Duncan from Clinton, Oklahoma, makes it 7 0 Oklahoma. The last word. Weeknights at 6 30 and 11 30 on Fox Sports Net. Welcome back, Bill Land, Dean Blevins, and Gary Reasons with you here from Norman, Oklahoma, and Owen Field. And talk about support. It is back. All the games have been sold out in advance for season tickets here. And we're glad to have our own Gary Reasons down on the sideline enjoying the balmy evening. <laughs> Bill, it is balmy down here, I'll tell you, but UTEP head coach Gary Nordis, no, no, uh, no stranger here to Oklahoma. He was here as the offensive coordinator in 1995 under Howard Schnellenberger. And it was kind of a strange season for Gary Nord that year. His family didn't like it here very well. He said the fans were actually obnoxious. They'd call him, email him all the time and didn't like it. Actually, they're calling him back at UTEP now. So he's had a long affair with these fans here, and it's been a tough thing for him to deal with. Let's see how he responds today. Bill? All right, thank you, Gary. The long pass is complete at the 50, the 40, and deep into Utah. Fumble the football. UTEP recovers. Unable to hang on to it was Damian Mackey. He was wide open, made the reception, and then on the tackle, fumbled the football right back to UTEP, and we've had a wild opening quarter. <laughs> yeah, we have, and it's kind of typical of opening games. You have things happen in the opener that you won't happen later in the year, and the team that can minimize mistakes like that, like the one that UTEP had on its first play on the fumble of a reverse that might have gone a long way, that team has a distinct advantage. Great play turns into a bad one. And UTEP gets the football right back, first and 10 at its own 38-yard line. Perez under center. Porter the back, Perez. He's going deep, got a man overthrowing his flyer on the play, Mays. And Perez trying to hop back up now. Ten of receiver again was Mays. Oklahoma was beaten that time. Yeah, bad We're so high up here, my eyes have gotten so bad, I can't be certain, but <laughs> it sure looks to be Derek Strait on the corner, number two, who was beaten that time, a good pass, and that is six. Oklahoma Bill with Marshall out of the ball game is playing a lot with a, basically five men on the line of scrimmage, the two linebackers being Stefan and Kalmus. Second down, Cleveland to the 40 and stopped there. Got a couple. It'll be third long coming up for UTEP. Roger Stefan made the play. You hear so much about Marshall and Kalmus. Stefan sometimes gets forgotten, even though he had uh, 22 tackles, started the last seven games last year, Dean, and he is a, is, he's a star in most places, but he just gets overshadowed by Kalmus and Marshall. You know, last year people thought that uh, how was Oklahoma winning with guys like Roger Stefan? Well, you know, now this guy in the weight room has really upped himself. He is the strongest guy on the bench. He runs a 4.58. He's gotten up to 230 pounds. This guy is a 32-inch vertical, so he is no longer a weak link if he ever were. Third and seven from the 41. Whistle stops the play. <laughs> Saw Bob Stoops looking on a moment ago, starting his second year here at Oklahoma. Bill, Oklahoma playing several true freshmen. We mentioned... Prior to the delay of game on the offense. 
Five yard penalty. Third down. We mentioned Lehman a while ago, and there's Brent Venables right here, Mike Stoops right there, co-defensive coordinators for the Sooners. But uh, right now in his first action is Dan Cody, number 90 on the defensive front. At an end, he backs up Heinke, and he has really come on and impressed the Oklahoma staff early. UTEP 2 or 3 on third down conversions at third and 12, this time from their own 36-yard line. Perez dumps to Napkin. He has tumbled shy of midfield and I think shy of the first down. Let's see where they spot the football. Had to get to his own 48. They're going to mark it at the 47. So it'll be fourth and one as Jones was in on the stop for Oklahoma. Ante, a senior from Homestead, Florida. Again, the, the, the tight end finds the seam, finds the nice spot down the middle that's open. Natkin has a great knack of doing that. Perez showing that he can thread the needle on that type of pass. It was a very good tackle in the secondary to force this punt. Thatcher is deep for Oklahoma. JT, a senior from here in Norman, 5'11", 217, and the fake, and up the middle, and bullying his way, and a fumble it looked like as well. Natkin had the ball. Well, that was one of those the whistle probably blew about 15 seconds ago, and that is a terrific call by Gary Nord and staff. Fourth and short, you kind of wonder, this guy does a great job of faking. Oklahoma coming up field, and it was fourth and very short, Directly to Napkin, the short man. Right. And tight end, great hands, and obviously uh, able to bull his way forward. 245 with a head of momentum and um, nice play. Oklahoma in an eight man forcing unit now, three deep secondary. And Perez going that way and complete to Ray. Unbelievable. Ray juggled and then head on. Allen Ray with a reception, Michael Thompson all over him. This is great college football. Ray, a terrific receiver. A go round on the outside. It's Ray against Oklahoma's Thompson. Thompson in good position. Ray a little push off. You don't call that, though. A great throw and catch, and Thompson, Bill, was just a step behind, but burned because of the perfect execution. And the Sooners' 7-0 lead is in jeopardy after the 41-yard pass play. Now this crowd will get into it to try to support the OU defense on a first and goal. Perez rolls out, sets up. Got a man, complete touchdown, UTEP. In the end zone, Tessier, Paul Tessier, a senior from Garden Grove, California, came via the Juco route and found a slot in the end zone. It's 7-6 Sooners. People wondering about the Oklahoma secondary. Tessier here finds an open spot only because of the mobility of the quarterback. You give a guy three, four, five seconds back there, it is hard to keep receivers from getting open when they have five guys out on a route. Bishop sets up for the PAT. Perez is the holder, so beware there for some trickery. Last year, Bishop 31 of 33 in point after. This one is good, and we've got a tie ball game. 4.48 remaining in the opening frame here at Owen Field in Norman. It is 7-7, UTEP and Gary Nord against the Sooners of Oklahoma. Welcome back. We've got a ball game with 4.48 to go in the first period and a wild first quarter. Rocky Perez, the TD pass to Tessier, and the point after makes it 7 all. There's Perez, 7 of 8, 85 yards, a touchdown. Most of the balls have been to receivers who have been open, so the secondary will need to tighten it down a little bit. Both touchdowns coming off of turnovers. Savage and Mackey are deep for Oklahoma. As Bishop will boot it away with 4.48 to go in the first period. And again, with the short onside, and Oklahoma catches this one and gets it with great field position. But you know what? I'll give Gary Nord credit. He's bringing out all the stops. 
26 point underdogs. They got nothing to lose here. And they've been within a hair of having a couple of huge plays. Well, and I think that because his team has started pretty well, Bill, they feel like they can do that. They stopped Oklahoma early and defensively and offensively they did well. We talked about the numbers off the top here. Was was a year ago. 221 pounds for Josh Heupel. 206 now. He's lost that. Look at his fat decrease. Down to 9% and his 40 time. He was not swift of feet last year. And he goes from 4.9 to a little over 4.7. And that is something that should pay dividends for Oklahoma because he may need to be a little bit niftier this year, losing a couple of great offensive linemen. Hands off on the first down to Griffin here. Quentin Griffin, a sophomore from Houston. 5.7. 193 pounds listed at. Ran for 285 yards last year and also had 11 receptions for 107 yards. Clark made the tackle from the defensive front of UTEP. It'll be second and nine. Bill, this is where if you're Oklahoma, you need to show dominance. UTEP's come out, they've responded with a touchdown, and now they've, you need to burn them because they lost the gamble on the onside kick. You saw Ray set up that big touchdown for UTEP. Now it's second and nine, Oklahoma. Hyper. A little bit underthrown, but didn't have much choice. Had to put it out in front and low for Norman to have any opportunity. Otherwise, the defender would have had the best chance to catch that football. Well covered by Clemens. The play really you didn't see too much last year. Mike Leach, the former offensive coordinator, now calling plays. You were there in uh, Lubbock a week ago in his debut in a win. But now you have Mark Mangino and Chuck Long sharing the responsibility. That's a play I don't remember ever seeing, but I think probably the mobility the improved mobility of Hypo allows them to do that. Kind of interesting, Dean, how those two, Mangino and Long, are both going to call a play, and then Mangino will decide which one to use. Yeah, it really is. It sounds like a good system. Mangino will be on the field where he can look his linemen in the eyeballs and, and uh, communicate with them. He'll have a play that he wants to run. And then upstairs in the booth, Chuck Long, the number two Heisman guy many years ago, former teammate of the Stoopses at Iowa, is calling plays himself, seeing in the, as pass game coordinator what he thinks will work. So Mangino has two ideas, you know, two plays called, and so he can go with one of those. He does go with one of those. And then Heupel's going to say, forget you guys. I'm going to go with my play anyway. <laughs> Mine's better. Yeah. <laughs> what have you been working with me for all week? Second and nine from the 45 after the penalty for Oklahoma. Little play action. Heupel able to dance away from one. Griffin, 20. 10 and down to the six yard line. That is Josh Heifel. Dodge a man and a touch pass and then the big game. Well, you said it. You did my job. That is exactly what Josh Heifel does very, very well. 43 up the gut here will bring pressure. Josh Heifel a little niftier this year. And Bill, he does. He does a great job buying time and then the touch. This little 22 can scoop. Yeah. Griffin is a fun guy to watch. First and goal from the four as forward motion carried him to that point. Griffin. Stuff at the four. And second and goal. 37 yards on that pass play to Griffin as Heupel gets a look at the call coming in. Once Josh. again, Oklahoma would love to be able. There you see a, a number that's pretty impressive for people who followed Oklahoma football. Touchdown passes to a bunch of different guys. But the uh, Sooners go up with their offensive line averaging 6'4", 294 pounds. UTEP small. They are only they are only 258. So Sooners with a 36 pound per man advantage. Second and goal. Touchdown Sooners. Oklahoma to the tight end Trent Smith. No! Heifel scored the first touchdown, second one through the air. Trent Smith tied in, a little corner route, perfectly thrown, and that's a, a great combination for Oklahoma. Trent Smith is as good as advertised. He's 6'5 and 230, and he blocks. And I think before he's done at Oklahoma, he'll own every tight end record and will be an All-American. Point after by Duncan is good, and Oklahoma back up by a touchdown, 14-7. 2.55 to go in the first quarter. We're set for the kickoff. Been saying that a lot. 14-7 Oklahoma with 2.55 to go in the first quarter. 
Well, Oklahoma last year averaged nearly 37 points a game, and that was eighth best in the country. UTEP scored 25 a contest, and we expected offense. We're seeing it here tonight with a few surprises on top. Hype was tossed for one and scored one himself, and Oklahoma will boot it off. Inside the 10. Austin brings it out to near the 30-yard line, first and 10 there for UTEP. Bill, there's a great disparity tonight in Oklahoma special teams from a year ago and UTEP's. Look at these numbers. Oklahoma a year ago, 40-yard net punt is terrific. Seventh national. UTEP, 31 yards. They were 107th. Oklahoma, the 15th best team in the country on punt returns. UTEP, horrible. Kickoff returns. Brandon Daniels had Oklahoma up there at number six in the country. This bunch was 108. So you add all the number of kickoffs and punts together, that's a de decided amount of yardage. Gary Nord said it cost him, he believes, at least three games last year. He said we very easily could have been at least seven and five instead of five and seven, and maybe better had their special teams been just average. An average play here in Oklahoma stuffs UTEP on a first and 10 from the 28. But I think that uh, what Oklahoma did with its special teams last year is, is a perfect example of what Bob Stoops, Stoops brought to the program, and that is focus, it is hustle, and it is accountability. You know, Stoops' mantra is no excuses, and I think he, his players don't have any excuses for not performing well. It's just, it's just those, those issues that you can address that don't have a lot to do with talent. The discipline that he's brought to the program is certainly reflected in the special teams play as well as other areas. Incomplete and laying out for that one was Tessier who had the touchdown reception. He got bumped pretty good as he sacrificed the body. Thompson was all over him. <laughs> you see Thompson was all yeah. over him and uh, I imagine that was a product of Mike Stoops being all over Thompson for not being <laughs> over the receiver a while ago on the, uh, on the big play for UTEP. But Thompson 19 is one of Oklahoma's best players. Third down and nine, the ball on the 29 now for UTEP. Last year, the Miners third in the whack in third down conversions at 40%. And here, third and nine, man in motion is Austin. Perez had him coming. The cut back and nothing doing that time. And the tackle made by Rocky Kalmus. Flag on the play, but very well defended by the Sooners, who are doing an outstanding job of tackling tonight. Normally in the first games, you see sloppy tackling, and you see players not wrapping the ball carrier up. I saw that a lot today. I know you saw some of the Notre Dame game. Remember them early? Mm -hmm. They couldn't tackle Texas A&M. They did later, but uh, sloppy tackling. And Gary Reasons might have a comment on that because he comes from the defensive side. Early in the year, it's tough. Did he ever miss anybody? His miss days? anyone or tackle anyone? <laughs> uh, miss anyone? <laughs> no. Nah. Let's take a look at what Perez saw coming at him. Well, he sees pressure up here, Bill. He's got, he's got to release the ball. He's got a slip screen going, and Kalmus on the top side there that we don't see is in perfect position to make the play. That was Williams coming after the quarterback? Kalmus finishing off the play at fourth and nine, and that means. Glenn Beard is ready, ready to punt. He is a senior, 6'2", 225. I was about to say, good chance to have an all-out rush, which the Sooners did and didn't get there. Thatcher picks up 10. JT Thatcher. Tough shoes to fill with those return men gone from last year of Daniels and uh, Jackson. Yeah, uh, Jackson did a, did a great job for Oklahoma. Jarrell Jackson and... Uh, there you see Mark Mangino, Cale Gundy right here, Mangino right here, and you know the guy in the middle, Cale Gundy, the running backs coach here now. And, of course, most of the viewers around the country will know Cale as a record-setting quarterback here for the Sooners, and his records are gone. <laughs> He's probably saying to Josh, which one are you going to break tonight <laughs> as he goes out on the next play? Cale's doing a nice job. First and 10 from the... 42-yard line of Oklahoma. Good position for the Sooners, up 14-7. Heifel. Complete to Wolfer, 50. Down to the 45-yard line, 133 to go, first period, and the Sooners moving it on the first down, and that'll move the chains as Bubba Wiseman, the Mike linebacker, a sophomore from Irving out of MacArthur High School in the Dallas-Fort Worth area made the tackle. Oklahoma doing a good job on one of its base plays. It's a team that passes to set up the run. Skinner gets out there as a right guard, a 300-pounder bill in the corner, and does a great job of blocking. And that's one of the best things, I think, that this 
line and last year's line did is get downfield in those types of slip screens and hitches. 13 yards on that pickup, first and 10 from the 45, and Heifel going deep. Complete inside the 10 yard line, and the Sooners are knocking on the door again. Savage with a reception. <laughs> Oklahoma expected to throw a little bit more deep balls this year, Dean. Let's yes. See it here. And Chuck Long was talking about how much better Hypo is at the deep ball. As you see, Savage beats his man, Clemens. It had to be a perfect pass, Bill, because Clemens was only a half step behind. But that's one that Mike Leach would call throwing into the barrel, where you throw it over the top. You have to make a decision on that kind of route, whether to rope it or throw it over the top. Right decision and perfect pass. Six and nine for 149. Maybe a second score coming up here. First and goal from the six. Heifel to the outside. Incomplete. Did not have control before it hit the ground, according to official. And Mackey was the receiver. Came in out of Union City, California. 28 grabs last year for four touchdowns, 319 yards. Mackey had it hit him. I, I think that uh, the defender on this is Clemens, does a great job, but uh, he had a little contact. When the ball was there, but uh, another play that uh, another pass on the money for Josh Heupel. Griffin and Latrell in the backfield with Heupel on second and goal. Josh to Latrell, stopped at the almost the six, maybe a loss on that play. We'll see where they spot it as AJ Shepard, the rattler, yeah. safety made the play. Yeah, he rattled the cage of Latrell there. There you see 23 running out. It's that's his man. If he can tackle Latrell, he's done his job. If Latrell can make the first man miss, he's in the end zone. Defense wins as a terrific play by Shepard. Third and goal from the five now for the Sooners. Up 14 7. Heifel. Just out of the reach of the tight end for Oklahoma, and it'll be a fourth down situation. Field goal unit will come on. That is one of the examples of where you would prefer to be back on the 20-yard line. You hear that said a lot. I don't believe it very often. I think teams would like to get down on the six-yard line. I do believe it with Oklahoma's team, though, because they love to stretch you vertically along with horizontally. You can't stretch anyone vertically when you're on the six-yard line because you only have 16 yards to work with. Duncan for the field goal, 22-yard attempt coming up. His first of the year last year, 11 of 16. His longest was 43. And Tim hits this one. And Oklahoma now, a little bit more of a cushion. Up 10, 17-7 after the field goal by Duncan. Hey, good quarter, and huh? the end of the first quarter. Stay with us on Fox Sports Net. Welcome back, Oklahoma, with a 10-point cushion after one frame here. Bill Land and Dean Blevins with you as the fans are fired up, hot or not. But it's full, and it, it is very good to see that again, Bill. We have such a great view of that. We have trouble seeing some things down there, but we can see the 75,000 people here. And the pride of Oklahoma is back not only in the band, but in the stands. For a while, it was only the band. Out of the end zone and the touchback will give Oklahoma, rather give UTEP the ball first to turn the 20. Great kick by Duncan. After the reception by Sanchez. Bill Duncan's going to surprise some people this year. I was at a scrimmage two weeks ago today, and Duncan, into a very slight breeze in scrimmage conditions, kicked a 60 yard field goal that went over by at least 10 to 12 yards. Now, wait a minute. You were there. You witnessed it. I almost caught the kick. Yeah, I did. Before or after beverages. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of water on that day, William. It was hot as well. But uh, no, no I he is really he's got a lot of pop. Yeah. He participated in the summer workouts and gives that as the reason why he has such a stronger leg. Another reason they're still excited about special teams here. Here's Perez on first and ten scrambling. Unload and incomplete intended for Ray. And Thompson again all over him. That's going to be fun to watch tonight because there's two talented guys. Yeah, Ray and Mays, the receivers, 81 and 7 respectively for UTEP, will be a, some of the better receivers that Oklahoma will see this year. Sooners shifting up front with 
a lot of people, it, not only because of the heat, but as Ramon Richardson walks off with a little bit of a limp, the bill they normally will roll in seven or eight down line. Second and ten, the ball on the 20. You need to get something going. Down ten here as Oklahoma start to take control of this game. Perez, whistle stops everything. Line judge throwing the flag on the near side. Five yard penalty, repeat second down. Watch 28 here with a little move prematurely. Chris Porter. One of the rules this year that has been changed is similar to that. It's reminded me when he jumped a little bit because defensively, you know when the teams defensively used to encourage, mostly on kicking situations, they would jump to draw the, the offense off sides. You can't do that now. It has to be a natural motion. And likewise, quarterbacks are going to be watched a little bit more closely to see if they're drawing the defense off with unnecessary head jerks. Second and 15 after the penalty. Perez wants a timeout. Well, Oklahoma, no penalties in that opening quarter. And that's also a rarity for any team on opening day. And UTEP getting a little bit of a hole there. The crowd gets going. Perez has to burn a timeout as Gary Nord comes over to visit with him. The lone mistake for Oklahoma in that first quarter, besides your busts and being beaten on a play or two, that was the, um, was the fumble. And that followed a 40 to 45 yard completion. Let's go down to Gary Reasons on the sidelines. Gary? Well, Bill, you talked about taking control of this game. Mark Mangino, the offense coordinator for the Sooners, came to the sideline, really praised his offensive lineman here behind me. Actually, they're trying to cool down a little bit. You see the cool fan here. There's, they got cool fans on this sideline, but nothing on UTEP. But control of the ball game is certainly taking control with the offensive line. They're taking it to the UTEP Miners right now, Bill. Thanks, Gary, I, Gary. I think the cash that they got for coming, they can buy them some fans. <laughs> <laughs> we bought our own up The here. guarantee, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, we're almost on pace for that 100-yard total that I mentioned earlier. You've got Perez for 11, and you've got, I've got double vision here working on my telestrator, but we've got 23 total passes there in the first quarter. So uh, I'm not a wizard, but let's see, they get you to 46 and 92, I believe, right? Yeah, our, our goal is we, we thought to be a value for pay-per-view that you had to throw 100 <laughs> passes because you're only paying a quarter per pass at home. We'll also probably be here till midnight if we reach that. So you're really going to get your money's worth. Well, I can't think of many places I'd rather be than right here right now. Boy, great fun as football is underway and it finally is giving people something to talk about besides the heat. <laughs> here they can do both. That's right. Second and 15 after the timeout in the crowd roaring again for Perez and crew. Roy Williams blitzing 38. Complete to Mays. Thatcher brought him down at the 25. Nice job by Perez, though, to keep it going there. We have seen some good football on both sides of the balls. We have a blitz by Oklahoma from Rocky Kalmus coming up the middle, 38. Safety Williams comes as well. And a great job of finding the receiver, Natkin. Watch 15 back here. J.T. Thatcher, all 215 pounds of him. Normally, you would jolt the ball, lo ball loose, but we're talking about a potential All-American in Natkin. Third and five, so they picked up 10 on that second down play at the 25. Austin, no way. OU's front there in mass to greet him. Step in the linebacker. Also coming up from the secondary, you see Ray, Ray Williams, with Roy Williams coming out of that pile. Bill, we're going to show you Roy Williams here coming defensively as a strong safety. You'll see him come from the right side of your screen. He's thinking pass. That's what the stat. Stop right there. Here you see Williams as he's come. He was coming back deep at an angle where he could get to the quarterback, but he quickly saw that it was a run. He shortened his angle and was able to make the be part of the play. This guy's a good player. 38 with the wraps on him. Fourth and five and Beard to punt it away. Thatcher on the return, he bobbled it. Slipped a couple. Nice effort by Thatcher to get out to the 42-yard line. And Oklahoma will take over there. Great field position, up a dime. Second quarter. Oklahoma rated number 19 by the AP poll, up 10, 17-7, second quarter. Bill Land, Dean Blevins, great reasons with you here in Norman. And we're going to look at some of the other numbers here as Bob Stoops on the sidelines after 
three years at Florida as a defensive coordinator and really got it going with that whole bunch up at Kansas State with Bill Snyder and of course start off at Iowa has really got it going here in Norman. Take a look at the game stats so far. OU 153 to 119 in total yards. Griffin still up. Uh, they blew the whistle. Wait a minute, Quentin. And Paul Smith. They're covering. Crowd not happy with this call at all. Let's take a look at it. Here. Well defended from the top. You'll see 22 come in and tackle 22. And yeah. Oh, I see. He actually came down on Smith. I don't think his, or at least the crowd felt his knee, Griffin's knee, never touched the ground. Probably shouldn't have been a whistle because there was the plays over. So trip right on top. Right. Great camera work. Uh, shows you should have been allowed to continue on. Kind of like uh, wrestling and uh, not getting the <laughs> takedown on that. <laughs> little slip screen there to Damian Mackey is the Sooners have uh, four receivers who are really almost lookalikes when you take a look at Savage and Fagan and Mackey and Wolfolk. Wolfolk, by the way, 17. We're going to keep an eye on how many plays he plays tonight because he could play up to 25 to 30 as cornerback and then get that many snaps as a flanker. Let's see what OU does on third and nine from its own 43 here. I plot of the shotgun moves Griffin over to his left. Trips to the left. Got all day. Got him in. Oklahoma Mackey touchdown Sooners. Wait a minute. We got flags. By the looks of the Oklahoma sideline, there's not much excitement. I sense that it's against the offense and perhaps offensive pass interference. And the official's face may tell it all, kind of like, oh, I know, you all wanted to get fired up, but don't think it's going to happen just yet. Yeah, it'll be good to see this if we have it on replay because what a wonderfully executed play. Again, defended pretty well. All right, Mackey's right up here on the top of the receivers. He's running a little wheel route. Little push. Little push. Michael Irvin says, hey, that's nothing. <laughs> that is a very questionable call. There was a push off. Uh, I would say seeing that play, I would see a penalty called on it uh, two times out of ten. Well, this was one of those two. <laughs> yeah, Mackie said, come on, this is football. <laughs> Uh, Bob Stoops immediately went to Mackey, though. You probably saw that shot there where he was kind of letting him know, I guess. You better be a little more careful than that. Third 24 now for the Sooners. Unspoken there was the wonderful job the offensive line did in giving that play time to develop. First penalty against the Sooners, and they're in a hole from their own 28. Hyper almost got it back with Savage going up and not able to hang on. Yeah, and the offensive line made a point, Dean. It's a group that seems to have some experience, but not as a unit and not at all the same positions, and they are concerned at how effective they'll be in the early going. Well, and I think that they have good reason to be. You lose Stocker McDougal as a first-round draft pick. You have Matt O'Neill playing wonderfully at center for a couple of years, making the Atlanta Falcons roster on injured reserve right now. And you have Jay Smith, who spent about 23 years down here, and a wonderful guy. And, you know, they all played together so well and had great chemistry. This bunch will have trouble being that good, but they have to be effective for Oklahoma to be effective passing the football. Ferguson to boot it away, 28-yard line, the line of scrimmage. And brought down, no whistle yet. And hold it, they're going to bring it back. They're going to bring it back to 28. The whistle wasn't heard or ignored by Sanchez as... Uh, They'll bring it back. One of the most skilled players for Oklahoma. There you saw him, number 11, is Ante Jones, and he made that play. Ante has never been known one to really outsmart a lot of opponents, but he can outperform most. 42-yard kick. UTEP will have it on its own 29-yard line when we come back. Nobody leaving. They made the effort to come here and 100 plus degrees in Norman, Oklahoma and the Sooners with a 17 seven lead. It's been an entertaining first half 1120 to go here in the second quarter and UTEP going to get the ball back Oklahoma's time of possession 
Look at that, just 646, but the Miners are down 10 points. And that time of possession with Oklahoma doesn't mean a lot with this offense. Perez out of the shotgun. Dumps to Porter. Out of bounds at the 31-yard line, maybe 32. And pick it up around three. Roger Steffen was covering on the play. Perez last year threw for 1,198 yards. Started nine games. Year before, he threw for 728 yards. And this is his 15th start. Second and seven at the 32 for the Miners. Bill, we're a little in the dark on this. I think Brandon Everidge is not playing as well. I've not seen him, and I understood he might not be playing for the same reason as Marshall. Interception, Oklahoma. Williams, no flags. Put it on the board. Touchdown, Sooners. Watch him jump the route right there. Perez doesn't see him. And that's a fatal mistake. As Williams knew what was coming from all the film study, he jumps the route and he gets six. 35 yard interception return by Roy Williams and Oklahoma now trying to make it 24 to seven with Duncan on for the point after. Oklahoma like fans happy that Roy Williams didn't take that North Carolina job, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like it right here in Lawrence, Norman. <laughs> Stay with us. Sooners 24, UTEP 7. <laughs> 24 to 7, Oklahoma after the interception return by Roy Williams really took the wind out of UTEP's sails. Soon as it started to take control anyway, but Perez, who we bragged about his accuracy, well, that interception, the first of the night, and it goes for six, as he explains it to Gary North. Well, you know, one of the things that I think Bob Stoops and staff have done is that they come into a game like this against a team that UTEP has made some good plays. I mean, that they look like a representative opponent and had Oklahoma not been a team, and if they weren't a team that took advantage of mistakes and not an efficient team, I think we could have a heck of a ball game here. But Oklahoma is crisp and playing well for an early opener. A deep kick and the return shy of the 20-yard line as bringing it back for UTEP Sanchez. And good coverage again by the Oklahoma Special Teams Unit. And Oklahoma... Here's a look at that interception again. Let's see the, the, the push from up front. And there you get a, a nice job by Moore in getting his hands up. And all it takes for a play for a, for a quarterback to lose vision for just a second is something like that. And that probably was what made that play happen. Yeah, Great Brandon job of camera, Moore. camera work there to show Moore getting in the way of the quarterback. Williams is the guy that gets the hug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ah, Moore's girlfriend to give him one tonight. <laughs> UTEP, first and ten. Nice cut back up the middle, and then the stop by Thatcher on Sanchez. Sanchez, pretty excited about him himself. As, uh, you're looking at the scoreboard, 24 to seven. You got to remember something here with UTEP too. A team that's five and seven, new head coach. An elite game next week, Dean. They play SMU, and Gary Nord was pretty emphatic that they want to win this game, but he, he thinks he's got a team that can compete in the whack. I would think so, yeah. And they don't want to lose sight of that no matter what the situation is here tonight. Perez brought down with the whistles and a flag. It's like the first penalty on Oklahoma. Sooners go to the 10-18 mark of the second quarter if indeed this is against the Sooners. That's not only good coaching, that's good discipline by the football players. Prior to the snap, offside, on the defense, five yard, first down. Something that really couldn't have been said in the previous regime. You know, some people wanted to point at it at the coaching staff, others at the players, and the truth is, point at both. Mm -hmm. Fact of, fact was, it was horrible. 
I mean, <laughs> you, can make, you can blame whoever you want, but the fans just got sick and tired of penalties and special teams mistakes. They got sick and tired of being sick and tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's first and 10 now, the ball on the 30. Swarming play by the defense there is Sanchez, the man with the ball, and Stefan as well as Calmus and crew also there. 9.50 and counting in the second quarter. Let's go down now to uh, sideline man, Gary Reasons. Gary? Bill, interesting to see how Oklahoma's defense prepares for every play. All of the players actually turn and look to the sideline. They see Mike Stoops, defense pointer on the sideline to get the call. They're all responsible for their call on the sideline, so you can't say that you didn't hear in the huddle. Bill? Second and eight for UTEP against that center defense, and they react well here. Gary, if you can hear me, I know and you know some other teams around the country do that. I, I seem to like that, but you would know more being a defensive player. What do you think? Well, Dean, what it does is it allows the defense to actually just look over there and be confident in the in the call that's coming into the huddle. And that way you don't have to all huddle up. And the, it actually gives the defensive backs a chance to relax and rest. They don't have to come in and go back out to their positions. So it, in a hot day like today, there's a real advantage for the defensive backs to be able to go out there and not have to come into the huddle. Yeah. Hobbling off is Dan Cody. I think he's going to be all right. Freshman from 8 Oklahoma. They're really high on this youngster. Third and 14, the ball on the 26. Perez scrambling. Brought down by Stephan at the 29-yard line. Roger Stephan with the stop. And again, good containment by the Oklahoma defense. And you guys are talking about that. I know some coaches, Dean, used to chart how many steps, how many yards, how many miles it might save in a game by the no huddle on offense. Well, defense, the theory should work as well. Exactly, right? yeah. I didn't pay as much attention to it because I was on the offense. <laughs> that's their problem. Well, there you go, because you're on the bench. <laughs> hey, that's a low blow. <laughs> well, it's been a while since we worked together. Got to get a in while I can. <laughs> you tap now to kick it away. It'll be fourth and 11 from the 29-yard line. Beard on his own 15. Thatcher will have a shot. Dodges one. 30. And out to the 37-yard line. JT Thatcher. Well, Oklahoma will get it midway through the second quarter here at Owen Field in Norman. Sooners getting a Heifel touchdown on the ground. And then a Josh Heifel touchdown pass, a Duncan field goal, and a Williams 35-yard interception return to provide a 24-7 lead. The Miners only score on Tessier, six-yard pass reception from Perez. Bill, I want you to watch number 19 here coming down for Oklahoma. This is Michael Thompson, and what he does is going to allow Oklahoma to catch the ball and make a play. Watch. In the middle of your screen, he was able to nick his defender just enough that J.T. Thatcher could catch the ball and make positive yardage. It's those little things that make the difference. Heupel on first and 10, the short turn in, incomplete. Fagan, the intended receiver. You look at Curtis out of Houston. Redshirt freshman. Make it second and 10 from the 37. Fagan last year, honorable mention all conference with 30 receptions and 382 yards. Bob Stoops and crew look on. If you're looking for something Josh Heupel needs to improve upon, that type of pass, sometimes he gets it a little low. Out of the shotgun now, second and 10 from the 37. Heupel. Behind the intended receiver that time, Trent Smith. You know, you've seen some quarterbacks who seem to play better in pressure situations or throw better when there's not much room for a ball to go through. There's a perfect example to play before for one thing, but this one, Josh has had the ball on the money tonight. I mean, the short stuff and the long stuff, that was a play that was wide open and one that would have been able to go for nice yardage, and it was just a, a ball that was inaccurate. Heupel last year, 15 Big 12 records that he snapped. <laughs> Third and 10, the ball on the 37. The trail shifts over. Heupel steps up in the pocket, a wobbler, and just shy of Wolfolk. So Oklahoma will have to punt it away. 
with a 24 to 7 lead. Bill Land, Dean Blevins, and Gary Reasons with you here on Fox Sports Net. Oklahoma season opener as the Sooners trying to better last year's 7 and 5 mark that ended up with a loss to Ole Miss in the Independence Bowl. UTEP went 5 and 7. And this is the first year for Gary Nord, replacing Charlie Bailey, who retired last year. We have the Sooner Nation all fired up and assuming that because of what happened last year and Josh back, et cetera, that it's an 8 3, 9 2, 10 1 type season. Um, the Sooners have to play ball. They can't take anyone for granted. And the tough stretch that we'll talk about a little bit later in October is very difficult. Sanchez on the return. Latrell met him at the 25 yard line. And he is brought down by there with a host of tacklers joining in on the play. Bill, if you look at the schedule for Oklahoma, you'll notice that the October bunch where you travel to Texas and you have Kansas State and Nebraska is a difficult road. But the rest of the games are games that Oklahoma will likely be favored in with the possible exception of being at Texas A&M. But the great thing about the, the, system, the system at Oklahoma now is they can win every game. You know, they can score enough points to where they can win. There's the October. October stretch. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. The, the good thing is, is after the Kansas State game, they do have a week off before they meet Nebraska. And regardless of how they've come through those two toughies, they'll need that extra time to prepare for the Huskers. Complete over the middle and out to midfield. Nap. The receiver that time for Texas, or rather for Texas El Paso. Joy is a 6'6 junior. This guy's a pretty good looking player himself. Yeah, he is. That's a bust by Oklahoma, and I believe the bust was on the linebacker, Stefan, who voided the area. And that's the reason for that big game. There was not a defender within 12 yards when the ball was caught right there. 24 yards on this reception by Joey Knapp. Last year, 13 receptions, 119 yards. And the new quarterback is Wesley Phillips, 6'4", 220, a junior from Williamsville, New York. You're thinking, how did he get from there to UTEP? We'll tell you in a moment. Completes it to the 45-yard line. And out of bounds, Sooner territory about the 43. Wesley Phillips is the son of Wade Phillips, the Buffalo Bills coach, and of course, his granddaddy's a guy we all yeah. know around here too, don't we? You bet, Bum Phillips. Straight and Williams made the tackle for Oklahoma. And I assume he got down here by flying, didn't he? <laughs> what was your answer gonna be? <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> Second and one from the 42. Right up the middle and the ball carrier Chris Porter gets the first down. As Thatcher makes the tackle. But there again, if you heard the crowd there, that's kind of what's back here at Oklahoma. That was second and one. That wasn't fourth and one. That wasn't the third and one. Fans trying to get into it, doing anything they can, just salivating, Dean, over the possibility of Oklahoma being better than they were a year ago. Well, Bill, the fans did that for Gary Gibbs for a period. They did it for Howard Schnellenberger for the first part of the year and certainly tried with John Blake. Now they believe that there is indeed hope and execution, and so they are very much alive. First and 10 at the 37 of Oklahoma for the Miners. Phillips got away from one, keeping it to the 30. Nice job of protecting the football. That and one, pardon me, Bill, that one will come back because there was a hold, and I believe it was on Porter holding a blitz from the outside from straight. If that's the case, though, if there's any penalty that a coach will put up with, is it one where you protect your quarterback in that situation? A quarterback will put up with it. <laughs> <laughs> you said just stop him. I don't care how. <laughs> Ten yard penalty out of the foul. Repeat yeah. first. I don't care what coach tells you. I'm buying you dinner. Exactly. After the game. Exactly. <laughs> Got a good call. Perez back in. Phillips last year. Four of eight for eight yards, so very inexperienced. Didn't play in uh, 97 with Richard. Didn't play in 98, Richard 97. So, nickel package for Oklahoma here. Five defensive backs. And on the play into Oklahoma territory at the 49 yard line. Nap the receiver. 
Straight, Stephen both there. Derek Straight, redshirt freshman from Austin Lanier High School out of Texas. Stephen in on the stop. Maybe I've overlooked it, but I haven't seen Woolfolk in on the corner. I, I was really looking forward to that because this guy's really skilled. You talk about players who have a chance to be stars. 17 Woolfolk can be a two-way star. And was expected to do a lot of that tonight. Perez. Incomplete. Now, Woolfolk, Bob Stoops said, you know, every, all I know is every time I see him over on defense, I'm going, he's better than anybody else out there. We, we need to play him. And but, he, He's, and he's very athletic, Bill, and he competes. And as a receiver, he understands what receivers are going to do. That gives him an advantage in covering people. I mean, you don't you see that a lot now. Charles Woodson maybe was one of the first to do it. You get Dion in the pros. Now, you, I mean, you have a lot of people around the country doing it. One of the reasons is with the scholarship limit at 85, your depth is hurt anyway. Yeah, you have a guy of that talent, you're almost foolish to not take advantage of. Third and 22 at the 49 and a timeout. And we'll stay right here with 523 to go before halftime. And a timeout call with the ball just on the OU side at the 49 yard line. Third down and 22 here in the second quarter. Bill Land, Dee Blevins, and Gary Reasons with you. Dee mentioned the schedule. Oklahoma really has things set up, though, to develop with this team because even though there are credible opponents coming up, Arkansas State next week, Rice, and then a week off, I believe, before Kansas, all here in Norman. Then the big game down at the Cotton Bowl against Texas, but that's the way you'd like to have this team have the chance to develop. Yeah, I, I think it is a good schedule for them, Bill, and a schedule where they will see at least five true fresh freshmen playing. Works, the running back out of Tulsa, Lance Donnelly, has come on really strong and surprised some people at tight end. They love him, and they really like Jimmy Wilkerson. And you talk about a Wolf Oak being a potential star. Wilkerson is as well. He is physically gifted. Dan Cody, we talked about earlier. Teddy Lehman getting a start tonight in his debut here at Oklahoma, not knowing if he would even play his freshman year. He comes in as a 4-5 runner, and they have a lot of uh, hope for him in the future. Mentioned schedules. People talk a lot about Colorado having a, and it is certainly a juggernaut. Kansas is surprisingly strong schedule. You see Oklahoma rated right number five as far as toughest schedules among the Big 12. 24 7, third and 22 on the 49. Perez almost, he did lose it. Oklahoma football. Thomas, I believe. Rocky Kalmus coming up with the football. A junior from Jinx, another big play. You just come to expect it with him. Perez never really was able to put it away here, Dean. Well, I think one of the reasons that uh, Oklahoma is, is doing so well right now is that the physical conditioning, I think that they are able to stay alive, they're able to be aggressive, they're able to be very physical. And this is a play where, Bill, you, you go for five seconds, but you go 100%, you go all out, and I think conditioning in a game like this is critical. I couldn't agree more. And uh, here's another look at the play. See, Perez nearly lost it, then got hit from behind, and then Kalmus coming in. Heinke with another big yeah. play. Or Cody, I believe that was Cody, rather. Freshman True freshman. Later. We just talked about it. On cue. He said, well, I better do something. <laughs> They're bragging about me. First and 10 at the 49 for Oklahoma. Just glad he's listening. <laughs> Heifel. Incomplete intended out there for Griffin. Did you mention conditioning, Dean? I, I was a little bit surprised, as sweltering as it has been here, that Bob Stoops just didn't blow it off. When we asked him about conditioning, he just said, we are in great shape. He said, that might be the best thing about our team right now is that we're healthy. They've been able to avoid in the dead of the heat workouts, but he said he didn't anticipate being a problem today. UTEP, when they got off the plane, came out here yesterday, everybody that we saw said, oh my gosh, how hot is it here? No, uh, and it no seemed excuses. to take an effect. No <laughs> excuses, and I'll have a comment uh, further on that about their strength and conditioning coach. Second and 10 here for the Sooners, and there's a loose football. 
I think Oklahoma's regathered it, though, as Griffin stays with it. Been a clean first half. Oklahoma had the fumble on the reception by Mackey, and they've had a penalty or two, and then that fumble, but other than that, it's been good. One of the things that Bob Stoops thinks was maybe his best move was when he brought in Jerry Schmidt as a strength and conditioning coach where he had spent some time with him at Florida and Jerry's been all around Notre Dame and other places and the turnaround has been just remarkable. We'll show you some numbers of some of the players and how they have transformed their bodies and also their mental attitudes. Hypo over the middle and incomplete looking for Damian Mackey. Yeah, and the, the emphasis so much more. Uh, at all programs, though, on the conditioning aspect and not just the weight training that is involved with athletes today. Bill, one of the things that Heupel needs to work on is not falling back as he throws the football. Watch him here. This is a time he's kind of a little bit guilty of falling back a little bit. Yeah, Chuck Long told me us yesterday that as great a year as he had, he said he got a little tired at the end. Right. Part was because he was thrown off the back foot and not getting up top. And that was a pretty good demonstration there kind of falling back into that maybe and he loses his accuracy it's like a pitcher when a guy when the guy holds back if you, you, you throw more strikes by throwing the ball hard the punt and it'll come back out to the 20 yard line or wait a minute no it went out of bounds around the five so he pinned him deep Ferguson Jeff Ferguson out of Holland Hall in Tulsa and those uh, those are other special team pluses that sometimes don't get reported a hook. When a team, you got 4.17 to go in the half, UTEP want to get something going, they got to start deep in their own territory. You are right, and here are the numbers we talked about a minute ago with Schmidt in the weight room. Latrell, think he can run? 4.54, four. we're going to not do that. 37 inch vertical is terrific. Frank Romero's a guy came in at 262 January the 11th. He's 292 now, and his body fat has gone down. Roger Steffen is a guy who's bulked up. 4.58 and his body fat is down. So these guys are leaner, meaner, faster, presumably better players, and certainly mentally tougher. First and 10 from the five. Perez going deep and incomplete. Oh, Romero gained that kind of weight. He must have been eating like we did yesterday at lunch round. <laughs> you might think he works uh, out a little harder. You mentioned eating around here. I think of Dinko's. Uh, Dinko Darlin with a couple looking at you. It's so hot. You just, just just throw a couple of those eggs down on the uh, the curb here, and I think you've got a couple of eggs looking at you. Everybody's got a grill in their driveway these days. Here's another look at the throw, and Perez showing his strength. Well defended. Now, second down and 10 for the five, and Oklahoma starts thinking clock and a chance to get good field position if they can hold here on second and third. Up the middle, Porter slipped up fell forward across the five to the seven yard line. It'll be third long for UTEP clock at four minutes and counting. Sooners would love to stop them here, punch another one in, get the lead to 31 to seven and basically call it a game and then they come out and focus in the second half. But that's the way they would like to end this after having a, a nice performance here in the first half. Third and eight ball on the seven for the UTEP minus. 24-7 Oklahoma. Perez to throw. Off the fingertips of Natkin, the tight end, and they've kept the big senior from San Antonio pretty much under wraps tonight. Certainly in a tight situation, you know Perez would like to go to him or May. Bill, this is just a poorly thrown ball as you watch Natkin settle into an empty area, and the empty area was huge. He stopped his route. That's miscommunication between the tight end and the quarterback. But that's another bust defensively for Oklahoma. A good pass combination there might go for the distance. Beard will come on and look where he's standing. Yep, the edge of the end zone. Fourth down and eight. No reason to not bring them all right now. And they are loaded up. Wolf up on the outside and almost getting it. Flag is thrown. Thatcher stays away, and it'll either be running into or roughing the kick, one or the other. Big difference here, too. Roughing gives the UTEP Miners a first down. So the 42-yard punt 
you can forget. And it, I believe it was roughing. Oh, now Beard's coming back. Wait a minute. Okay, let's watch again here. All right, we'll have a couple of looks at it here. Great view right here. Not if you're Beard. <laughs> uh -huh. Boy, that is a that is a very difficult. Here's another look. Difficult call to make for the official. What? What did they end up calling it? I certainly would not call it intentional. That would be running into in a five-yard penalty max, if anything. And by calling it a five-yard penalty, then that still that puts them be fourth and three. Yeah. And, and they will refuse that so that they don't risk getting the punt blocked. And right. Oklahoma takes over with a chance to go down and punch another one in. Uh, and fans thought because both teams were looking like which unit is coming on the field. Are they going to kick it again or not? And then obviously Oklahoma declined the penalty or a UTEP said, all right, we'll give it to him at the 48-yard line. Yeah, and most fans just wanting to have a say in the game. And to be honest, most fans don't realize the difference, I don't believe, in, in, in the penalty, that it's a five-yard penalty if you run into. They're mm -hmm. thinking that it's automatic first down. Yeah, and usually when you see that, you think, oh, my gosh, here they go. They got the ball back. First to 10 at the 48 in Oklahoma. Let's see if they can make something here in the final 315 of this first half. Griffin. Nice run as he sprints to the 45-yard line of the Miners. Great job by Scott Kempnick up front, 72, who, who just is about twice the size of the little guy, 22. Kempnick has been injured his whole career, but he's in the best physical con condition of his career. He's 6'5 and a half, 310. He's the strongest guy on the team in the bench press. He's had great practices, and they think that the rust is knocked off and that he will have a very good year. When he first came in, they were talking a surefire NFL player. Second and two, Latrell in motion. Sets up. Griffin, close to the first down, should have it. A little ground game helps the passing game, and a passing game helps the ground game. Griffin, a guy that, Bill, he's sprouted. He's gotten tall. He's 5'7 now, <laughs> 190. And uh, now that's what they list him as. He truly is. Really is. Yeah. You've done some uh, investigative work on, on <laughs> sizes and speeds, and uh, we've boy, had some into espionage these days. Well, so. we just had some fudge, and I just wanted to make sure that they still do today what we used to back in the dark ages, and try to turn from 5'11 oh. and a half into 6'1. Yeah. <laughs> and they still do it. Yeah, if they get away with it. The Stoops doesn't let them. <laughs> First to 10 on the 42 of UTEP. High pull. Touchdown. Drop the football. I should have said would have been a touchdown. Ball a little and, bit underthrown. I think Griffin was thinking the same thing instead of grabbing it first. Heupel underthrows throws this a little bit, but look at the pressure that he gets. Late hit. I know that's slow motion, but uh, William, give me a vote. You're not a guy that is. Persuaded easily. Yeah, I thought Holloway uh, and Griffin should have caught the football obviously, but Holloway 58 I believe was the guy that uh, certainly could have been blown for the late hit and uh, No call. So you're not taking the position is what I'm hearing. Uh, of course I'll agree with you. You, know, <laughs> you buy the beer later. Second and ten of the 42. Ronaldo works. And across to the 35 yard line. So they're back to third and short to first down now. High made the tackle. This is the Utah pass or the shuttle pass. And it usually gets it back in the open, especially when you have the clock running down and a team in long yardage. And it's a good way for works to get into the flow. Third and three. At the 35. I think Oklahoma goes deep here. Savage wide right. Norman and Wolf up to the bottom. Across the 30, 29, 25, and still moving. Ronaldo works. The freshman from Booker T. Washington out of Tulsa. And works as a guy who worked hard coming in here over the summer and has seen it pay off by playing. That is a great audible at the line of scrimmage by Josh Heupel. And a good job by works of making the first tackler miss him. 
But that time, Josh Heupel audibles out of a pass. And, of course, I'm thinking it's going deep. But he audibles out of a pass into a run successfully. Gabe Williams made the tackle for the Miners. But not before Oklahoma has another first down with a minute to go at the 24-yard line of UTEP. 24-7 Sooners wanting more. Heupel. Got a man and a first down again inside the 12-yard line. Savage makes the reception. He had 31 a year ago. Well executed here, William. Good protection, a rocket throw, and you'll see Savage. Where am I? I'm turned around here. This is Savage right here with a hook. Watch what he does after catching the curl. Come back, comes back to the ball. Now he gets his head up, turns around as quickly as he can, gets positive yardage. There's an example of weight training helping him. He wouldn't have been able to gain that extra three yards a year ago. And as a result, first and 10 at the 11. And it's not always going to be one that you're going to break for 50. But in that situation, good enough to get your team a first down and a timeout is called by UTEP here with 40 seconds remaining. And the Miners certainly realizing, I think, what you said earlier a little bit that, hey, we're not out of this yet. We're reeling a little bit, but they get one here and we are in huge trouble at the intermission. And they haven't played that poorly. No. You know, they, they've gotten the, uh, handed to Gary Norton his bunch, as you see some of the stats there. Rushing Oklahoma, not where it wants to be, but passing, they've done well and they've been efficient. But Gary Nord's bunch has lined up like a real football team and has played reasonably well, but Oklahoma has just out-executed them with better athletes. Gary Nord, who spent uh, 13 years at Louisville where he played. And then an he assistant. graduated. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now, cheap shot. As, uh, he was, of course, on uh, Howard Schnellenberger's staff and then came here. And as it was comment about dental hygiene and talking about Oklahoma's not having many teeth and then rednecks while he was coaching here that got him in the hot water that has stayed boiling hot as this weather has with OU opening up with the Miners and Nord coming back here. Gary is an approachable guy. Many people in Norman who got to know him really liked him. He's popular at UTEP and he'll be more popular if he wins games. First to 10 from the 11, the whistles here. And to finish there on Nord, and he said in his apology, he goes, nobody's a bigger hick than I. So he said, I certainly didn't mean to hurt anybody. And then he got a backpedal and said, yeah, well, you fans are obnoxious, but that's the right way the fans should be. <laughs> Five yard pen. First down. I imagine he's hearing quite a bit over that UTEP sideline tonight. Well, he said he had been inundated with, well, I don't think he used the word inundated, but he said he'd gotten a lot of uh, emails and it had some clacking teeth sent to him. <laughs> so it's probably been a, a fun couple of weeks up in his office. Uh, he's a nice guy. He was good to us. And, yep. uh, and he was just part of a debacle here and not uh, really much responsible for it, quite frankly. And I think he's got things uh, set up down at UTEP to become pretty decent. With the Bob Stoll, the AD there, the last guy to coach a winning season at UTEP. And new facilities and uh, some other additions going on there. They're on the comeback. Here we go. Finally, the shuttle pass works. And works to the five. Stumbling out of bounds at the two-yard line. Ronaldo works on great balance to keep his feet and keep moving. There's a little bit different look from Oklahoma. Yeah, Oklahoma by in most cases would go left with that play because they lined up with trips left. Right on this side over here, you only see one of the wide one of the receivers, but there's three over there. Josh is looking there to get the defense to think even more. And as we roll the tape, it's a little snooker job. It is once again the Utah pass and a terrific job by Works of making a lot out of this. Not only did the first man not tackle him, he barely touched him. Yeah, he left him in his tracks. Flags everywhere here as Oklahoma sets up second and one. The ball on the two-yard line. Prior to the snap, ball start. Ball start. Set it back five. Now, there's a difference. We talked about 30 minutes ago about how Oklahoma, when they had it down on the six-yard line on the other end, that if they're going to throw the ball, that they would just as soon have it back at the 20. In this case, Bill, you don't do that. You know, you've got it all the way down to the two-yard line. That's a critical penalty. Not in this game, but it would be in a, in a game that uh, was closer. Yeah, in a situation here, you figure you get something out of it, but this is where you want to be able to stuff it in for six. Hypo to works. Leaps over one before he is knocked out of bounds. 
They're going to say at the five. Hey, Bill, that's a pretty cool customer. Works is coming yeah. in. He doesn't look like a freshman. One of the reasons he doesn't look like a freshman is that he came in in the summer and he worked out with this bunch. They had 96 players here this summer setting all kinds of records and workouts. He told us the other day that uh, he gained 12 pounds through all this heat because he was eating three meals a day. And he also was able to work out with Hypel and go to his house and watch videotape with him regularly. He was welcomed and felt good. He looks good. Yeah, dislocated finger, I believe, in the left hand. He had a cast, but he's taken it off. He just heavily wrapped. Hadn't bothered him tonight. Third down, and Hypel wants a timeout now. With 27 seconds to go. And a timeout is called with Oklahoma knocking on the door again. And at 24 to 7. Third down and four for Heupel and crew. The ball on the five-yard line. So, yeah, they could get a first down without scoring a touchdown here. But uh, kind of going back to some of the fans. And can you do all that reading there? You know you're a Sooner <laughs> win. Is all of that? I know this is well, cable, but can we see? Is everything on there fair? You know you need to lose weight when. You, no, I can't. I can't read all that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure it's crafty. When your family pet's named Boomer. Okay. I don't know how close we are to that 100 pace, but I bet our man Don King can tell us. Passes Oklahoma is. Tonight. Here's take a look at the two quarterbacks tonight. Perez, 12 of 20. Heupel, 12 of 24, so 44. We're about to have number 45, so we're not far from that 100 pace. Confident of a pass. My partner is on third and four. The ball on the five, the bold call here. <laughs> 27 seconds to go. Latrell and Works are the backs behind the quarterback, Josh Heupel. Heupel. Oh, just missing off the fingertips of Smith in the end zone. I don't know if Smith would have been able to stay in bounds, but he knows that he could have and should have had that. Had a four yard TD reception earlier, and now the Sooners will come on for what appears to be a field goal attempt. Heupel buys time here, as you'll see. Right in here is Smith. And he will work himself open, and Heupel finds him and throws a good pass. Smith won't drop many of those. Duncan looking for a 22-yarder. Had one earlier. No fancy stuff here, and he booms it through. Fletcher on the hold, you never know. And it's fourth. Uh, the three points gives Oklahoma the 20 point lead now, 27 to 7. And Duncan, a pair of 22 yard field goals. And Oklahoma with a 20 point lead and 18 seconds to go before intermission. And some of the crowd saying, I'm going to go get a little air. But uh, they head out, take a little halftime break. We air. hope you stay with us because at halftime, we'll have a chance to visit uh, with Joe Castiglione, the athletic director here. Hopefully J.C. Watts, U.S. Congressman and former Oklahoma quarterback will be by and a chance to catch that Oklahoma marching band as well. And of course, the schooner starting it off right now. 18 seconds remaining here in the first half as the Sooners rank number 19 in the country and a sellout crowd of 70,000 plus here. And they've sold out for the season ticket plan of 63,000. Well, the turnaround, not only on the field, but uh, in the stands and financially, and every, everything is just block. hitting on all cylinders. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's quite remarkable. Of course, the play on the field at this <laughs> university drives all of that. Oklahoma had their fiscal year in June, 125,000 of the black. Now, a budget of millions, that may not seem like much, but hey, it's better than those red numbers. And again, attribute that to uh, a lot of the work of Joe Castiglione, but it still comes down to your football program. You've got to do it. And this one's starting to do that. Well, the university bill is hitting on all cylinders because in David Bora, not only does the university have a, a proven leader with a lot of imagination, but a guy who prints money. I mean, he, he can raise cash. Where? <laughs> <laughs> can I stop by? <laughs> yeah. You know, and speaking of that, UTEP has new facilities coming in. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that gives Gary Nord hope for the future, where their facilities have been poor. They now are becoming competitive in their league with that. Yeah, the, the Sun Bowl has always been a pretty nice facility, but they're improving their workout facilities as well as their academic situation. And uh, feels that the whack after the resettling that's taken place is a league they'd be very competitive in. First and 10 from the 20. They keep it on the ground as Porter 
out across the 30 and has the first down, and that'll stop the clock with 11 seconds remaining here before the halftime break. Stefan in on the stop for Oklahoma. And talk about things going well at the university. Enrollment at an all-time high, over 21,500 officially enrolled here at Oklahoma. And don't think that doesn't have a lot to do with the football team. <laughs> sure does. No matter what some others may think. Again, UTEP running it out. And Oklahoma takes care of business. That should be the end of the first half. So the Sooners, 27, UTEP 7. After leading at the quarter, 17-7, Williams, the 35-yard interception return, the only scoring in the second half as neither offense able to put anything into the end zone. But OU up by 20 at the break. And the Miners will head to regroup to see what they can come up with in the second half. And Oklahoma with... Gary Reasons down on the sideline, a chance to visit with head coach Bob Stoops and get his thoughts. Gary? Well, Bob, what do you think about your offense this first half? Like Josh Heifel picked up right where he did last year. Well, I don't know. I disagree. We're a little bit too sloppy for me. We've uh, we've had too many miscues. He's been off on too many throws. He's better. He's much better than that. And, uh, you know, we've missed, uh, missed too many scoring opportunities inside the red zone. we got to finish some drives. Your thoughts on your defense shutting down Rocky Perez? Uh, they, they've really done a good job. We gave up the one big pass or the one route that gave led to some points. Outside of that, they've been solid and had a big play of their own uh, for a touchdown. Okay, we'll see you in the second half. Thank okay. you, Coach. Bill? Thank you, Gary. Thanks to Coach Stoops. As uh, you can tell, it's not going to be all slapping them on the back in the locker room at halftime. It won't be a love fest, <laughs> but uh, this program didn't need a love fest. <laughs> Thank you very much. Editorial comment, not necessarily the opinion of this network. We're back with more <laughs> at halftime in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back, it's halftime, 27 to seven. The Sooners over the UTEP Miners, Bill and Dean Blevins, Gary Reasons and the Fox Sports Net crew with you. And the University of Oklahoma marching band playing to the 70,000 plus here. We're gonna let you go down on the field and enjoy all the action. You talk about people that have been putting it in in hot weather. Think about these young men and women uh, in full dress out here tonight. So let's sit back and enjoy the University of Oklahoma marching band.
University of Oklahoma marching band and Oklahoma marching it pretty good on UTEP. We're at the half, 27 to seven, the Sooners over the Miners. We're back with Joe Castiglione, the athletic director of the Oklahoma program in just a moment. Welcome back to the campus of the University of Oklahoma this evening as the season opener on Labor Day weekend underway and we're halfway through with Oklahoma a 27 to 7 leader over the UTEP Miners of the Western Athletic Conference. Bill Landy, Blevins and Gary Reasons with you. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. It started off with a Josh Heupel touchdown run. Sooners able to convert after a costly pen, uh, turnover by UTEP. UTEP comes back though as they get Tessier after a nice scramble job. Tessier 88 in white, so Oklahoma comes back to 88 in crimson. Trent Smith, great reception, super throw. And then defensively, Bill, a jump on the play right here. Defensively by 38, Roy Williams. But at the same time, we talked about more causing that play, and Oklahoma played pretty well, but not up to the standards of Coach Bob Stoops. And we'll see how they react after he looks at these numbers. UTEP, two more first downs in the Sooners, 38 more rushing yards. Oklahoma, the passing edge, and you see 216 to 198 total yards. Time of possession, again, not a factor. Their down conversion's got to be concerning, though, hunting. Yeah, it really is. One of seven is not a good number, and uh, I see now why Bob feels the way he does. I, I think that uh, overall, though, Oklahoma had enough big plays to offset some of the things that they did poorly. Of course, a coach goes into a game and Bob says you never feel totally comfortable. And he says you always want to minimize the mistakes in the first game is a bigger problem uh, than the other games. And, and that is what is really concerning him right now. Penalties uh, was not an issue until late in the half for the season. And Oklahoma uh, again spreads it around eight different receivers and make catches tonight. I think we mentioned earlier about how many receivers 16 or 17 had caught touchdown passes last year. 20 receivers made catches last year and almost every one of them getting into the end zone at one time or another makes it very difficult to defend this team. And the kickoff to Sanchez of UTEP takes it a yard deep in the end zone. Stumbles at the 10. Driven down at the 14 yard line. McCoy is there as well as Williams and let's go down to Gary Reason. Well, Bill, when you talk about Gary Norton, his UTEP Miners, you know, his self-assessment for his ball club coming into the season was, talk about their offense. They're going to throw the ball around the field. They certainly tried to do that tonight. Not successful. Defensively, they're going to try to rush the quarterback and try to make them throw. They've gotten plenty of throwing from Josh Heupel. But special teams is something they thought they could do a lot better of this year, and they haven't accomplished that. He said they try anything they have tonight. The field position snake has bit them very hard tonight, and they really haven't got anything going. Bill? Thank you, Gary. First and 10 at the 14 for UTEP. So the field position situation again. And Perez. I like Oklahoma to dominate in the third. Tipped at the line of scrimmage. Intercepted. Thatcher. 20. 15. 5. Touchdown. Oklahoma. There's another flag. Thatcher. Good call, partner. <laughs> I didn't know you meant instant. <laughs> we said they had the headset on down there. <laughs> Gary must be passing that thing around down there. <laughs> well, it'll come back, but it will not nullify the interception and a terrific big play by Rocky Kalmus. Here's the guy that won't get much recognition, but watch 20. Middle of your screen, get the hands up right there. 6-3 frame, lean body. He is um, a player to be reckoned with, not only on the run, but just in any situation because he has such a feel for the game and a terrific job by Thatcher, a Norman product, who, Bill, I thought one of the more remarkable facts is that he started against Nebraska as a running back. <laughs> and so here he is, Kalmus causing the play and Thatcher finishing it off. That angle, it appears like Kalmus is actually right on top of Perez. He actually was quite a ways back, and it kind of gives you that when you tell players that when you see the ball go be thrown, get your hands up no matter where you are, it's a perfect example of how 
you just might deflect it, but even if you don't deflect it, it's like you said earlier, you might distract enough to cause the interception. This time, he directly caused it. Wilson guessed guilty of that hold, I believe, but I believe also the point was that the Calmus has a terrific feel for the mm -hmm. game. Back to the goal line, and loose ball, fumbled. They rule touchdown, though, so take that. And Oklahoma with Hypo coming back to take care of business on his own. Well, the defense responded very quickly, and the offense <laughs> did as well. So, so far I can say I told you so. But I want to see that it was a beautifully executed play. The blocking is there. The velocity on this ball is there as they go over the top. Savage. In stride. And I think that's a good call that it's a touchdown, but it's a bad call that he didn't give the touchdown at that point, but waited three seconds later because at that point the ball was loose. Yeah, as soon as he crosses the plane with the ball, it's a TD. Duncan makes no mistake, and Oklahoma gets seven, 28 seconds into the third quarter, and it's now 34 to seven. One more time, Savage. Savage comes and he will run a post route. We get, you get Mackey underneath here, you get Savage on top. He crosses the plane, it's a good call. See if the official comes into the shot. The, the official did not give a touchdown immediately, waited about three seconds, and I think what probably happened is he realized that he had made a mistake and went ahead and went with it, but it sure does look suspicious to the opponent. Yeah. And Hypo, meanwhile, takes the helmet off as he has thrown his second touchdown pass of the night and scored one. Savage gets his first score of the season. All right, let's see if he actually was across the line for a touchdown. At that angle, you can't be certain because you have to be straight down the line to tell for sure. I wouldn't, from that angle, I can't be certain. It appeared, I would say yes from that angle, but again, if you don't have it from the other angle, you don't know. Maybe we can see from here. A little different look there. I'll let you call that one, partner. Touchdown. <laughs> Says it on the scoreboard. That's what those coaches used to say, right? That's what they're telling the UTEP players. 34 to 7 and the kickoff out of the end zone to bring it out to the 20 yard line. What's that Pat Jones used to tell us? It'd say after the ball game, a big a critical play they had one year, and they said, Pat, was that, was that a touchdown? They asked him in the post game press conference. He said, hey, the referee raised his hands up, didn't he? <laughs> Put six on the board and they yeah. call a touchdown. There you see the numbers 31 yards, Savage, one play, one play on defense, so fast start. Kalmus and Thatcher combining on the interception, if you will, and then Oklahoma responding with uh, the home run, Heifel to Savage. And now, first and 10 for UTEP, and this is exactly what Gary Nord did not want to happen to his ball club. From the 20. And before he almost got the football, OU. Stepping through, no one touched Jeremy Wilson guest. He was a guest in the backfield that time. Yeah, kind of double trouble here with Callens doing his part as well. On oh, we top. touched it. Yeah. There was confusion offensively, and guest takes advantage. That's a bust. Center's, center's mistake. Second and 12 now after the loss of two, the ball on the 18 yard line for the Miners. Perez, the quick dump to Napkin, and he's met by a pair. Ante Jones leading the way. There is a sense of urgency. Even though the score is 34 to 7, the tongue lashing that the Sooners apparently received is evidenced here on just the first few plays. Yeah, I got a feeling it was Bob Stoops talk, not that OU great band performance that has got this team ready for the second half. I think that uh, locker room was soundproofed. In fact, I kind of hope it was. Third and five on the 25. UTEP really needing to make something happen here to slow the Sooner momentum. Perez steps up, going deep, and Hayes high in the air, and a flag is thrown. He was sandwiched by Jones. And I think it was straight back there with him also. Yeah. Here's the reaction from the OU sideline. And a player down for OU. Quite a collision there as the staff was just absolutely livid that 
that was a bad call but violent collision is two defenders were in perfect position First down. Ante Jones one of the Sooners down and Bill if I'm not mistaken straight is down as well we'll see if we find the interference is an inside a route taken right here straight on top of the receiver Ooh, collision collision and then the pile up at this point you give the penalty away without a problem and hope you get out of there without losing a player oh it amazed the actually got the better of the deal and it was a violent blow to him but he came down on top of Jones who I believe was on the bottom and then sandwich actually in between that was straight you know the way they're the way they're holding that you know I've learned not to, to speculate so I won't say that I think it's a cramp by the way they're holding him so <laughs> <laughs> I hope you are right but yeah. let's take a brief I'm time not going to say it. it I'm not going to say it it could As be wrong <laughs> Bob Stoops heads to the sideline we'll go ahead and make our medical diagnosis among ourselves we'll take a brief time out we'll be right back with an Oklahoma 34 UTEP 7. Thirty four to seven Oklahoma over UTEP and another look young and old are here tonight enjoying it. Here's the fake field goal Perez comes from the left side with a left footed kicker which gives him the chance to roll right as a right hander the receiver well covered by Wolf Oak but had he caught it it would have been completed and uh, it would have been completed of course it would have been a first down <laughs> very perceptive <laughs> Cleveland the intended receiver hey the Sooner fans uh, boy congratulations to all of you who have made it here tonight as the largest opening day crowd since 88 74,761 and, and a few of them have uh, headed over to the corner over there at O'Connell's pub but uh, tell you what the bulk have stayed and Oklahoma's treated with quite a performance here to start the second half here is Works and living up to his name as he rambles and Merkins finally brings him down, but not until he gets out to the 18 yard line and picks up five. Ronaldo also helped in preseason with the fact that Quentin Griffin, the starter, had been, it was out with a shoulder injury for a while. So he got lots of reps and he got him with a first team, which you don't see true freshmen coming in getting first team reps and a lot of them very often. Second and five at the 18. Works again, comes across the 20 to the 21 yard line. When we talked to Works the other day, Bill, you remember we were asking him about his weight and the fact that he had gone from 195 to 207 in the sweltering heat. And he looked like a kind of guy who could carry some weight and would develop after, like most of these kids, when they go through spring training and the conditioning and the, the eating at the, at the, at the uh, training table for a couple of years. He said he thought he might end up playing at 230 pounds before it's all said and done. And uh, it's a guy that had an ankle injury last year, Booker T. Washington, and cost him uh, some games. He still put up some impressive numbers with uh, 1,300 yards rushing. And you can just see there's a look in him tonight, the shiftiness and some of the things he's shown us on his few carries already that he has certainly got some ability to do some pretty nice things. Now, it appears here short of the first down, and they're going to have to punt it away. One of the things, yep, you're going to get the entire conversation, by the way, of our conversation with Ronaldo Works. This is the last thing he told us. But, he, but he, we asked him the difference between high school and college, and he said, in high school, I could bow my runs. I could do just what he did right there and try to outrun, and he did outrun people. In college, he says you've got to go more north and south. He didn't do that there as well, and that cost the Sooners a chance for a first. And as a result, Ferguson stands on his eight. The line of scrimmage is the 22 to kick it away. Sanchez is on his own 30 for the minors. Ferguson, plenty of time. Boots a boomer. Sanchez returns from the 20. Got five, got six or seven, and then meets the wave of Oklahoma tacklers to come down on the play. And a 52-yard kick by Jeff Ferguson, who was fourth in the Big 12 last year at 42 yards a punt and an honorable bench in all-conference pick. And that OU net punting game was among the best in the country. Wow. 
Rocky Kalmus once again. Does this guy ever take a break? <laughs> you know, that was a kick that did not outkick its coverage. It was 52 yards, but it was also one with a lot of hang time. First to 10 from the 26. Perez. And it's underthrown. It'll do it all over again on second down. 7.23 to go third period. Terrific play that time by Eric Fernander in containing Perez. There are your total yards now, Bill, 255 to 50. Only a five-yard difference. And there's Eric Fernander. Has a little bit of a, has a problem hearing, partially deaf, but is a terrific young man and gifted otherwise. And they believe he'll be a great player here. Second down and 10 and Austin <laughs> carries the football, not much. And Fernander makes the play. Well, one thing about that is that those players react to the ball, Dean. Exactly. Yeah. And that's one of the, take a look, look at here. his head. Look at his head. Did you see his head looking down at the football? It's all linemen are supposed to do, but Eric Fernander does it for sure because that's the only way he gets off on the snap. Third down and nine at the 27. Fernander right here again. Porter met at the 30 yard line. Well short of the first down. And he was tackled by Rocky Kalmus. You tap have to punt it away. Kalmus said, well, we got a flag. I beg your pardon. We'll see what happens here. Talking to Perez, not good for OU. You know, I'm sure there are some fans sitting around, and that was a chop block, Bill. I believe that was the call. So they will kick it away here. Illegal block. Both ways. Both ways. Legal block both ways. Is that what you're saying? No, I think he said below the below ways. The way. That's okay. the rule we were talking about before the game that's been uh, changed a little bit this year. Uh, what they're basically trying to do is prevent wide receivers from coming in motion and cracking back on players above the waist. And they've extended the zone from five yards to 10 yards, but you can't do that. Trying to clean it up as best they can. Yeah, but they've actually made a couple of good changes. Sometimes I wonder about some of the changes. Thatcher from the 20, 25, tried to dance around one and not going anywhere, even though given great effort on it by J.T. Thatcher. And Oklahoma will take over there. We'll take a brief break. Sooners with a 34-7 lead over the Niners. Welcome back as we start the fourth quarter here in Norman. And Quentin Griffin with the football. Walker made the tackle, and Oklahoma will move the chain. Bill, finishing a thought a little bit earlier, Oklahoma is involved in a pretty long football game right now. I think it is over, what are we now, about it? Closing in on three hours. Yeah, <laughs> average time for a game last year, no TV was three, three hours and two minutes, with television three hours, 16. And Quentin here carrying the football to the 30-yard line before he is stopped, picks up five or six. And in this game, by, by television standards, our breaks are shorter than right. regular uh, television. So that's not even much of a factor this evening. And we may be here at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> well, with offenses becoming more, the one back, the passing offenses, no, they're not all as open and as wide open as, as Oklahoma's, but people are just throwing the football more, and there means incompletions, and the clock stops. The NCAA changes rules every year, and they try to do everything they can to shorten games. Savage and stopped at the 30. What do you think they'll ever consider the clock moving on incompletions? Never say never. You know, I, I, mean, I at don't some see point it the, because yeah, and I think coaches, it's not like they want to stay here all night either. But it's it's a problem that I don't see the answer unless when people throw that much, you're going to have incompletions. And well, what color usually wins out in arguments? 
green. And money is going to win that argument. And what that means is longer games. And that would shorten the game too much. And I would think that that would lose revenue and uh, probably would keep the NCAA from seeing the dollars that they otherwise would see. Third and four for the Sooners at the 30. I'm taking the over on that one. Bro. Well, I got another thought on for you here in a second. <laughs> Here's Hypo in trouble, and he is sacked. Sacked one, I believe, huh? Yep. 13 last year. We mentioned that in his first tonight. And Oklahoma now backed up third and around 15. UTEP doing a good job in coverage and at that time also breaking through on the outside with the rush. And you're wondering why Josh Heupel is in. I know a lot of people are and thinking, gosh, the season depends so much on his health. I think Bob Stoops is dissatisfied overall offensively with the offensive performance. And if he only gets sacked once a game, there's his sack. He isn't going to get hurt. Minson Holloway had the sack that time for UTEP. A nice job done there. Ferguson will kick it away. He's averaging 43 yards a kick tonight. A signal fair catch, and Oklahoma cannot catch up to it. It'll come back out on the 20-yard line, and we'll take a brief break. See Ferguson wanted to pin it inside the 20. Not happy either. We'll be right back. <laughs> 19 remaining. Miners with the football from their own 20. Bill Lamb, Dean Blevins, and Gary Reasons with you here at Owen Field, where the Sooners are their biggest crowd in 12 years of over 74,000. And if you can be sluggish with a 34-14 lead, that's what they are right now. Perez trying to uncork UTEP, complete to Mays to the 40-yard line, and picks up 20 for first and 10. The other thought on speeding up the game, Dean, the XFL is tied in with different uh, television networks and to keep the game in three hours they are shortening the play clock 15 seconds and, and that would be a solution wow where you don't take away from the game yeah well defensively oklahoma back in it, it's not a prevent defense but the way that the way they covered that play it appeared to be a prevent defense they will want to get up in the face of the receivers a little bit more they bump the corners corners on the wide receivers oftentimes Right now, they are not doing that. But I think what Mike Stoops, in his personality, and Brent Venables, they are aggressive. That's the way they are. That's the way they live. That's the way they coach. Let's go down to Gary Reasons. Well, Bill, if you remember, we started this ball game where the temperature was over 100 degrees. It's dropped somewhat down here on the field. It's about 80, 85 degrees now. But these players have played very hard and long out here tonight. A lot of cramps are occurring on the field. Marcus Creechin just came off the sideline. They're tending to him on on the bench. Actually, a lot of the guys are cramping up after the plays, and they're just trying to stretch out. But, you know, it's not uncommon for a type of ball game like this to actually lose 8 to 10 pounds in the ball game and try to replenish it on the sideline. You just can't do it. Yeah, you just can't pour it in fast enough. Uh, even though temperatures now are pretty decent and a pretty good breeze. 11-15 to go, 34-14. The third down and eight at the 42 for the Miners. Well, let me tell you about cramps. It has <laughs> to do with not only hydration, but uh, exertion and other issues. So uh, temperature is only one of the factors involved there. You see what they're doing, everything they can to keep them cool on the sidelines. Perez out of the shotgun. Look for Porter on the flare. Resets and incomplete. Intended for Porter. Thatcher and Wolfel both there for the Sooners and Stefan had pressure on the quarterback. Well, he did. He had uh, did a good job for a period there of that play, but he ended up losing, uh, leaving his feet. And when you do that, that's a no-no. The quarterback able to escape by a little extra time, and that's what stresses the secondary, and they almost got the completion as a result of Stefan leaving his feet. Glenn Beard will come on to kick again for UTEP. And instead of Thatcher, Mackey is deep for the Sooners. The eighth punt of the night for Beard. So even though UTEP has put some pretty good numbers up yardage-wise, they stop for the most part. Mackey, the fair catch at the 25-yard line of Oklahoma. And that's where the Sooners will operate here in the fourth period. Number one offensive line still coming on, and I would be stunned otherwise, Bill. It's a 20-point game, and you haven't won the game, 
and you also want to leave on a good note. So I think what they are desperately wanting to do is drive this football 75 yards, put it in the end zone, and maybe call it a night for those guys and let a lot of the guys who deserve a chance to get some experience, let them play. So Hypo brings them out. And the Sooners also, you have to develop game conditioning as well. It's one thing to practice and to work out and be in shape, but you've got to be able to go the long haul. It's not like it'll be cold down in uh, Dallas when they meet up with Texas at the State Fair. And fumble, and it's recovered by UTEP. I think Jackson's the one that came up with the football, and UTEP will get another golden opportunity. Let's Bubba Burcham, the center here, and he sometimes gets his rear end a little too low. That's not the fact that that was not an issue there. What was an issue there was that his hand was uh, wet. He had a lot of sweat on it. He did not get a good grip on the ball. The ball never cleanly left him and got airborne. And now the Miners. Again, 10.54 to go in the ball game. And OU not celebrating by any means as UTEP Really being stubborn. Here's Perez going for six and overthrowing Mays. He was well covered by Wolfolk. And you can see why the coach's eyes light up with him. Yeah, you, you can because Mays is a big time receiver. That time he has the field. He is, you got the field corner over there, is what you would call Wolfolk because he has to cover the wide side of the field. And he was with him step for step. Mays, a second team all conference pick in the WAC last year with 60 receptions. And that's the second best in UTEP history. 881 yards was fifth best in the league as Gary Nord, the first year head coach of the Miners, on the sidelines, second and 10 from the 23 of Oklahoma. Perez, again going for the touchdown, and Mays had a little bit more room, but it still took quite a pass to get it in there. And we'll have third and 10 coming up now. Michael Thompson here locked in man coverage. Up the boundary on that wheel route, and that is a play that he is a step and a half behind. He, he was not in position. He's got to take off and run, not look back at the football. Look at the, listen to the crowd, look at the receiver's eyes, and that's when you turn around at the, at the precise moment. Third and 10 for Perez and the Miners. Drills it across the middle and incompletion to Natkin. Sooners thought it might have been a completion and a fumble, but Natkin never had possession of the football. Now here's how effective Natkin is. It seems as though Oklahoma has really shut him down for a while, yet I believe Don King, seven receptions. You know, Bill, when Gary Norb was the offensive coordinator in 95 and Schnellenberger came to town, Schnellenberger's first press conference, I remember him saying that uh, the tight end is our focal point. We're going to get the ball to him. They indeed did that year with Steven Alexander, a terrific player in the Oklahoma scheme. But that's been Louisville's and Schnellenberger's philosophy all along and continues to be Norb's. And every tight end will tell you, so the broadcasters are always open. <laughs> Fourth and 10 for the 23, and the 40-yard field goal attempt is no good. No good by Ricky Bishop. So the Sooners dodge a bullet after their third turnover of the night and still lead it 34 to 14. Oklahoma 34, Texas El Paso 14 as Oklahoma has it first to 10 for the 23 after the missed field goal. And it is complete. Norman to the midfield area. Josh Norman before he's knocked out of bounds. Fans on the west side wanting a 15-yard additional amount of yardage tacked on because of a late hit. Bob Stoops bunch does not get it, but uh, you know, Josh Norman is a guy who's really developed into a nice receiver. And for a guy coming out of the backfield, you like to have him the size of Josh Norman at 223 with a 35 inch vertical. He has all the physical tools. 20 plus on that play. First and 10, 49 after 26 yards in the pickup. Here's Hypo rolling out to his left, gonna keep the football. And he scampers out of bounds to the UTEP bench area. They'll mark it on the 44 of the Miners. 
And it'll be second and short coming up for OU. High was there to cover on the play. Sophomore from Lubbock. Bill, he won't be confused with Michael Vick, but wheels are better this year. There you see the number of 300-yard passing games. Is Hypo on the verge of another. And, and that we'll, other guy right behind him, Major Applewhite's quite a story as he uh, battles to come back from an injury and the quarterback situation down in Texas. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on yeah. just the Big 12 in general here, Dean. Yeah. It's second and two. And Oklahoma keep it on the ground. Nice, nice hard, work. strong run by Ronaldo Works. And I think that uh, Josh Heifel, by the way, at 274 right now on the brink of breaking, uh, breaking that barrier and adding one more to the total. But uh, the question on that... Applewhite is will he have another one? Yeah. As uh, or will Chris Sims be the one having the 300-yard games? Matt Brown saying you make the decision right before the game against Louisiana Lafayette next week when the Longhorns open up. Well, I know Mac and like Mac and don't believe Mac. <laughs> uh, others are saying that he has openly said he's been surprised at how Applewhite has recuperated. Here is Works. He's fixing to go here to the 20 and brought down there. Ronaldo works. Well, they'll say after the game, what was the buzz? The buzz might be Ronaldo works. 21 on this tote. Finds him a crease. Nice job by the offensive line. Cuts a cuts back against the grain and toppled at the end, but he's showing good vision, which every good running back has. He doesn't have the blazing speed, but he's around a 4-5 runner. First through here to the 10. Watch out. He's in the zone. Shooters get another six. And he is officially the buzz of the evening. Oh, and they love it here at Owen Field. Freshman from Tulsa, Booker T. Washington, his first college touchdown. Ronaldo is smelling the goal line, sees a hole, and just darts through it. I don't think that he was going to be stopped by arm tackles, Bill. 19-yard touchdown scamper. Duncan's point after splits the uprights. Coach. And Gino with a pat on the back for the freshman works and the Sooners make it 41 to 14. <laughs> I was about to refer back once again as we see this play for Ronaldo works and say that he is a soft spoken individual. That would be referring back to that same conversation. So I won't. But watch him pick the knees up. Some guys who run four five play at a speed of four five. Some guys who run four four play at a speed of 4-6. This guy plays fast. I'll tell you what, I think I would talk to him for another hour next week if he's going to play like this. For crying out loud, we need some more material. Well, yeah, if the game's going to be five hours. We do need some stuff. <laughs> Can you set that up? <laughs> By all means. I'm sure he'll be happy to visit with his performance here tonight. Well, you know how fans are. There you see the numbers on the scoring drive, 112. Five plays, 77 yards, but fans build just die. They, they live for uh, for hope, for optimism, for someone who's going to give them something new, and uh, that's what they see in Ronaldo Works. Well, and one of the unique things about this state is without a major league sports franchise, your college programs, whether it be Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, or Tulsa, your Division I schools, really get the focus, and obviously in a football state, it starts right here, and certainly with the University of Oklahoma and their tradition, and uh, you see something like that from a freshman on an already pretty good football team, and you can't blame folks for getting fired up. Just shows that they're justified. <laughs> Oklahoma to kick it off. Duncan. Pretty good into that brief to the three. Yeah, and number three, Austin, brings it out to the 21 yard line where the miners will operate with 913 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Well, speaking of the Big 12, as UTEP comes out here, Nebraska, of course, picked number one in the country and a, and a winner today over San Jose State. Uh, Texas A&M, a, a pretty decent performance, even though they fell at Notre Dame. Texas yet to play. Who do you like? Is it an obvious Nebraska and then the rest, or uh, 
Is there some evening up there? I don't know if it's Nebraska and the rest. I love Nebraska's squad, and I, th I said last year after I was able to call the, the Fiesta Bowl that the way they played there that they would be uh, the preseason pick to be the number one team in the country, and I'll stick with that. Kansas State is uh, for real. Uh, they've got some, some things, I think, losing in Seminole. They lose some things defensively, at least they did in that first game, that uh, they need to shore that up. But they have talent, they have coaching, and they have that same schedule. Uh, Texas, <laughs> Bill, is going to have to prove it, but they certainly have the talent down there to, to go. Uh, I thought Texas A&M played pretty well today. Mm -hmm. You know, for a team that got beat to a questionable Notre Dame team, I thought they played pretty well. Boy, he did pretty well. That run by Napkin after the catch was uh, nothing short of sensational. And an old picture of the game, it may not mean much, but the things that were said about him coming into this game certainly uh, have held to form. You mentioned the number of receptions, and uh, they, Gary Nord talked about how tough he was, and uh, he proved it there. First attempt from the 33 after he picked up 13, and he earned most of it himself. Here's Kalmus with the pickup. Rocky to the 15. And he's showing a little bit of that running back skill from his days at Jake's High School. <laughs> and Thatcher's the one that caused it. Well, the secondary has given up some receptions, but they have had a lot of good collisions back there. And finally, they have jarred the football loose. And Kalmus, the recipient, and he did turn into that running back that you saw back at <laughs> Jinx High School. Boom, Thatcher with the hit. Thomas, thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know how long Natkin had that ball, but I didn't see Nord jumping up and down over there, screaming about the call. Let's take a look one more time. Yep, he had possession of it. That's not Natkin, I'm sorry, but he did have possession. Nap, the uh, backup tight end, or right. sometimes they go with two tights. First to 10 at the 12 for Oklahoma. Heupel hands it off to Works. Works. Pulls a couple with him down to the five yard line. So Ronaldo works in. Hey, maybe a couple tonight, huh? The best thing that's happening with Ronaldo work success is that that gets the attention of number 22, Griffin. Now, he's a guy who practices hard. I mean, he's a good kid, but uh, there's nothing like having some competition back there, especially when it's a young gun coming in. Second down and three. Works again. Look at the power! Works! Not to be denied! Touchdown! Oh my gosh, what a run! line does its part but also in the backfield there's a great block by Jamar Mosey and then it is nothing but leg drive <laughs> leg power and determination that's big time incredible he's dragging 250 to 300 pound lineman has the presence to hold the football out to get across the goal line as well and Mark Mangino is saying, son, you did pretty well, but we need to do something else. Break a tackle, would you? <laughs> <laughs> 47 to 14 and Duncan trying to tack on the extra point here. Well, that no doubt will send Josh Heupel to the showers and allow Nate Hibble a chance to take his first snap in many a year. 250 pound Barry King was number 36 that was just Seemingly had him tied up and going to wrestle him to the ground. And he's just, okay, I'll go ahead and drag it in here a few more. And it wasn't like he didn't have a good shot at him. He had him yeah, all the way. You keep talking about wrapping up. He had him wrapped up. Didn't matter. Duncan's point after is good. And works with a pair of touchdowns for Oklahoma. The Sooners now lead it 48 to 14. One more time coming right at you. Headline writers around the state are coming up with it works. <laughs> Hopefully they'll have something better than that, but uh, that name will give them a chance. Look at this dragging of multiple players. Yeah, Barry King had him, and then at one time, Young was also there. 
And you know, I, I guarantee you the fact that he was here this summer and became comfortable in the system and became a much stronger player is, has everything to do with that touchdown. And Dean, when, when a, a group of linemen makes the initial push and then they see a guy like that carry it on in, that can only fire them up to say, hey, we got a guy like that back there. All we got to do is give him a crease. High school wrestler, I guess. I didn't uh, get to ever see him wrestle Booker in high T. school. Washington. Yeah, Kenny Mundy, the former OSU Olympian, coaching him. Oh, no. It looked so like a wrestler. It was like, it? I'm not going to be taken down. Yeah, <laughs> period. Sooners had a great wrestler in its secondary last year, and Rodney Rideau out of Midwest City, who was a I guess terrific. It, they should have given Works another point for the escape there, right? <laughs> Don't you still get one for the escape? I haven't done wrestling in a while. It did. <laughs> Remind you of a grappler. <laughs> 754 remaining in Oklahoma now 48 to 14. So Jack Spates is a great recruiter. I wonder if he can recruit someone already on campus. He's on the sideline down there, isn't he? Yeah. Jack Gary? going down there. I think I'd so let's see. Bowl game season. Look at you, January. I remember watching some former or for some, some wrestlers, uh, football players, Granville Liggins was perhaps my all-time favorite uh, multiple sport football wrestler over in the old field house. Old Granny Liggins would, would lay it on you. <laughs> Gary Reason's going to lay it on us down there on the sidelines. Gary? You know, Bill and Dean, one of the unique things I think about Ronaldo works is that he's just a freshman. You know, you take a freshman and put him in this running game and this passing offense and make that potent, you're going to have a powerful thing here for the Sooners. Haven't had a powerful running game for years here with this program, and I know that Bob Stoops wanted to focus on that running game tonight and came a little late, but uh, looks like works is getting the job done. Yeah, I think you can say that uh, as Works two touchdowns have lit up the board and opened this one up. First and 10 from the 20 for UTEP and an opening there for Cleveland. He's out to the 30, brought down by Straight. That's good to see he's back in the game. So Straight obviously is okay and hardly hobbling there either. Good opening up here by the UTEP line. Yeah, you know, UTEP returns some players offensively. They have some guys up front that uh, can do a nice job. I, I think the future for them is bright. Four of their five starters back. Uh, Clayton, and I'm not sure if he's back in. He went down earlier, started 30-some games in a row. And he has a brother, Robert. I guess we have four brother combinations on this team, but a brother, Robert, is a true freshman at right guard, 53. Fumble, Oklahoma's recovered. Yep, Sooner ball at the 31. Dan Cody getting a lot of snaps. Boy, the freshman showing up big tonight. Being introduced to big time football and he's enjoying it. Fights off a blocker, fights off a hold and comes up with a football. Kalmus caused it. It was his initial hit that popped it loose. Boy, Kalmus, you see his line of stats later on tonight with the Fumble recovery and the deflected pass. Nate Hibble comes on now to lead the offense. 6'3 sophomore from Hazelhurst, Georgia. Cody taking a seat after bringing the ball back to the offensive side. And Hibble locks it. Incomplete. And no flag. Well, Nate Hibble enjoys his first pass. I guarantee you that was one that he enjoyed being able to come in, get the field position that he had, and be able to go up top as Josh Heupel. We're going to get the Heupel-Hibble deal working here. Could he just second. sit down for a while now yeah. so we don't have to mix those back and forth? But that was a terrific throw. And uh, the 300-yard night was attained in the end by Josh Heupel. And they were going for Donnelly, another freshman, on that receiving end there. Works, looking to get outside, and now turn it up. And ran out of room on the sideline, but got to the 35, and nice game for Ronaldo Works. Works was nine for 74 yards and two touchdowns before that carry, and who knows? He may be headed for a 100-yard night. We still got 7.09 remaining in this one. Dean, you're talking about Hibble. Of course, he, he had to sit out last year the red shirt. He had a red shirt year in Georgia 98. So this is his first snap in a football game in a couple of years. Since high school. 
Third down and five. Works. Yep, it does. Cost the 20. <laughs> now, what a luxury there for a quarterback who's looking for some feel good and get the rhythm of a game. You yeah. miss on your, your first pass, all right? This guy, you pop it to him twice, and now you get another set of downs. Well, and sometimes the second guy goes in, and he doesn't get the array of talent around him. He gets the second line sometimes, although the ones are in there now. But he has backup receivers, as he did at the tight end position. But Hibble's a guy, a four-point student, has a very strong arm. He's a guy that came from a different system with Jim Donnan down at Georgia where Quincy Carter beat him out in a deep drop, deep pass system versus this control passing game. And hands it off to Works again and he's picking up five or more a tote. Clock moving at 633. He now has 90 yards. Gabe Williams made the tackle. And the other part of this is Oklahoma, am I right, led every game last year? and could not maintain that lead. Exactly. And when you get to this point with well, this one, the, the outcome is not in doubt, but you want to be able to put a game away and put the clock away. And it's nice to have that option now. And Bill, they talked about that all during the off-season training, during spring ball, and also during the summer conditioning to be physically and mentally tougher late in ball games. Second and six, and the toss out of the backfield. Incomplete. Sooners trying to hook it up to John Connor, 6'1 sophomore from Columbus, Texas. I thought Chuck Long had a great description yesterday, the former Iowa superstar who understands quarterbacks as well as anyone in the country, of course, and he's now the quarterback's coach here. And he said, he said, Nate really has to reinvent himself because of the system he used at Georgia is so much different than this. And the transition has taken time, but he is doing it really well right now. And the sky's the limit. Third and six for Hibble here. The ball at the 15 yard line of the Miners. There's a bullet to the one yard line before the receiver is knocked back. And on the catch that time for Oklahoma, Steenhook, 6'4", 204, sophomore from Tulsa. You want to know why 65,000 people are still in the stands? They want to see this guy's arm, and they want to see this pass right here. Nate Hibble has a rocket, and he rocketed that ball on time and on target. He looks like physically another number eight that played at Oklahoma, not in that uniform, but with Dallas in Troy Aikman. He's not Troy Aikman, but he has some similarities. 5.39 remaining, and it is first down and goal from the two. Work spins. This time, UTEP's ready for Ronaldo and stops him at the two. No gain. Bill, I, I go back to the, the Aikman comparison. And again, this is not, he's not Troy Aikman style now. And look yeah, more yeah. Than one of the people that I respect most around the Oklahoma program told me after watching him throw the first day at practice when he transferred over, he said this is the first guy that uh, has looked like Troy Aikman uh, that I can remember coming to this school in a long time or even in this conference because of his demeanor and his release and, and velocity. Second and goal now from the three officially. It works, leading the block. And drag down around the five yard line. <laughs> Tim Woodard, freshman out of Houston, MacArthur, made the tackle. All district player last year, true freshman. 5'11, 185, and Oklahoma now. Third down and goal from the six yard line. And you know, the Sooners. Would love to get in the end zone one more time here and certainly help the confidence of their new quarterback. One of the things he brings is the ability to run. Quarterback draw is something that he will be effective on. Out of the shotgun, let's see what they come up with. Hand off to Wicks, and he is in the end zone again. Looked like they shot a safety. Or brought somebody, but Wicks found a gap and got through there, and Oklahoma very switchy, you'd love it. You got your half a hundred. <laughs> and you've gotten some of it on the ground. <laughs> that's right. You know, you mentioned the blitz, and, and that's a great uh, point because that's what Ronaldo works picked up here with his vision. You've got to make the first guy miss you to be a decent back. But sometimes that first guy is coming as a live bullet from the secondary, and it's hard to pick him up. And Oklahoma with Duncan. Hope his leg's in shape. 
<laughs> Getting plenty of practice tonight. Had a pair of field goals earlier. Now he's doing the extra point work as works. A little weary. But it's a good tire, didn't it? Yeah, it's very good tired. <laughs> Oklahoma getting some other offensive linemen into the action, and Howard Duncan doing his job there, 68, the soft spoken junior college transfer. He is trying to compete with Mike Skinner for that right guard position. Go you, more blocks like that, and he'll gain some more playing time. Tell you what, the carries that Works has got tonight, the performance he's had, I'll bet you every freshman next year is going to go, that guy came in in the summer. I think I'll be in Oregon <laughs> in the summer. What, what time do, can I move in down there, Coach? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you talk about a guy that, by example, will bring some people to the campus early. There's Works' third touchdown tonight, nine plays, capping off the 31-yard drive. Well, you know, the coaching staff can't insist that you come and work out, but you know how those deals are. And Bob and his staff are pretty convincing, even though they can't convince. Like I say, let's see, there was this guy last year that came down here from Tulsa. Uh, let's see what he did. You make the call. 4.05 to go with it, 55 to 14, Oklahoma, and the kickoff. Coming up. If the game ends the way the Oklahoma's playing now, it will end up being a successful night because the Sooners were able to finish it off. And you brought it up earlier. They didn't do that last year. And this year, they're starting off on the right track in that regard. Sanchez downs it. And the other part of that that is nice for Oklahoma is they had it first and goal at the two, couldn't get it in, and instead of on a third and goal at the six, all right, we'll throw it one more time. No, they came right back and ran it again and did score. And kind of proven a point with that running game and that they're not all talk, that it's going to be an, an improved factor. And I think the word they've used is more efficiency this year. Uh -huh. Here come the Miners, first and 10 from their 20, just under four minutes to go. New quarterback in for UTEP. London, redshirt freshman from Spring, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Cleveland, Rovan Cleveland carries the ball. Not much there, though. Jared London, the new quarterback, 6'5, 210, a redshirt freshman from Klein Oak High School. Sideline man Gary Reese has probably seen him play a little bit. Sooners getting a lot of faces in the action right now. Matt McCoy, 34, at its strong safety. Second nine, nothing in the middle, so tries to break into the outside, but good pursuit by the Sooners as Cleveland is brought down there. Richardson and McCoy there to make the stop. McCoy, another one of that Jenks group. And not hard to figure out why they're looking for a fifth straight state championship. He's <laughs> <laughs> here. Penalty against UTEP. Trying to spot some of these new guys in down there. Britt Jackson, a senior defensive back out of California, is in. Holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. Heard the call with 317 to go. And it'll be. Second and 18 now, the ball on the 12. Oklahoma, but it's 17 to 7 after one, 27 7 at the half, 34 to 7 after three, and now 55 to 14. Quick, what well, doesn't look right out there defensively for Oklahoma, Bill? No Rocky Cowboys. Oh, he'll probably come on to be a 12th man. <laughs> Fumble. Then Oklahoma's got it at the five. It'll be first and goal sooner. Ramon Richardson scrapes it up. Richardson comes up with it. Mentioned some names we haven't talked about tonight. And Richardson, senior from Broken Arrow, came out of NEO A&M, and he gets a big play. Well, what will happen here is we'll watch the bobble, and 91 will pick it up, which shows his some athleticism here. But what happens is Ronaldo works will catch him on the sideline and say, come on, you only had four yards to go. Did you see what I did? Fernander, I think, caused that fumble. He's had a big night in his limited snaps here this evening. 
And Oklahoma, a chance to tack on another one here, first and goal from the three. Nate Hibble comes back in, and Works is beside him. Can he make it four? Hold it, flag. <laughs> he trying. did have a fourth touchdown. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Could hardly get it out before he was back into the end zone. <laughs> Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty, repeat first down. Bill Oklahoma changing as many offensive linemen as it can. Josh Tucker, 61 in at center for Bubba Burcham, and he's an undersized player who has a lot of potential. They think he'll be a really nice player. But the problem up front is there aren't enough horses. They're trying to redshirt two really fine players in Wes Sims and Cliff Takawana. Tucker out of Moore, yeah. 6'3", 250. Yeah, he's smaller than that right now. He's one of those that had lost some weight from the summer. I think he's probably playing at around 235, 240. And again, people bouncing off. And also, uh, part of their lack of depth there, Howard Duncan is their swing guy backing up either side on the guard position. So I guess that's probably the most critical area, not only just from the standpoint of they got to have consistency there, but they can't avoid, they need to avoid injuries yeah. so you can kind of have that red shirting process. Well, there's our total. We talked about maybe 100. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get there. I think I saw a white flag go up on the far side. Although Sooners might make it 83 right here, William. First to goal from the 13 after the penalty. Keeper on the ground and works weaving his way, picks up a few. I know he's going to get some tired and dejected players right now, but Ronaldo works. It's taking several players to bring him down. He, he misses not only the first and second and third, but sometimes it takes fourth and fifth guy to get him. Bob Stoops, the second year head coach here with Oklahoma. Interesting fella, an interesting background, having worked with some great coaches and Hayden Fry and Bill Snyder and Steve Spurrier, and bringing a lot of that that developed his own philosophy here. Second down and goal from the 11. Works again. And he is brought down at the 11-yard line by Holloway. Minson Holloway. Eli Steenhook, five, has been in and out of the lineup. A walk-on. Nice play by Holloway here. Watch 58. One of the base running plays in that offense. And, uh, yeah, he does. Does a good job of corralling an uncorrallable player. Third and goal now from the 11-yard line. Let's see if Oklahoma does go to the air here. 124 and counting. They just want to keep that clock moving as much as they can, too. Works the play action. You're trying to fake with the pass, and nope. Works the stop there, and now fourth down, and... The kicking group waiting. Do they go in? Bubba Wiseman made the tackle in Oklahoma. Well, they're in a quandary, Bill. They want to get Nate Hibble the chance to, you know, see some live action and uh, let him throw the football. And I think that's what they're going to do here. But this is where some people accuse the Steve Spurriers of running the score up. Uh, you've got to give a guy some action. Yeah. And if young, they tried to run it out. The answer is you've got to be better on the other side to stop them yeah. and uh, and realize what, what's going on here. And let's see. Nope, they're just going to run it again. And works with everybody in the building. Probably no one is coming. Still makes a nice run. And Oklahoma will turn over on downs. But Bob Stoops trying to do the classy thing here and not run up. There's a big difference between 55 and 61, too. Yeah. Uh, as far yeah. as uh, perception. And perception and, and team being proceed as being embarrassed and, and believe me I think Utah for the most part represented themselves pretty well here I do yeah. I really do they uh, were organized they didn't have uh, foolish penalties they didn't turn the ball over all night they did have turnovers but a lot of that was because of the aggressiveness of the Oklahoma defense and just first game jitters but uh, I think this guy has to be pleased with what he got out out of his bunch tonight they open up the whack against SMU next week in El Paso and SMU playing Kansas tonight so uh, interesting to watch that matchup next week. Meanwhile, Oklahoma will be here for Arkansas State. 
We'll have that one for you here on pay-per-view as well. UTEP downs it, and that'll be it as Bob Stoops heads over to shake the hands of former Oklahoma assistant coach Gary Knorr. Bitter opening night for him and a great opener for the Oklahoma Sooners after a first half the coach Stoops not real pleased certainly had to be much happier with the second half performance and the final is 55 to 14. We'll be right back to wrap it up from here in Norman where the Sooners are victorious 55 for Oklahoma to UTEP's 14. Stay with us. Oklahoma 55-14 and all in all, Dean, oh, you uh, got to get a pretty good grade out of this one. Yeah, I think they do, Bill. I think the most important thing is they come out of this with a win, they come out of it with confidence, and they come out of it with no injuries that we're aware of. Hey, I want to thank a lot of folks that have helped us out here tonight, including our all-star crew up top here, Bob Gogo Stevens, yes. Marty Sullivan, yes. the incomparable Don King, and yes. for Dean Blevins, Gary Reasons, and our entire crew, this is Bill Land saying so long from Norman. Once again, our final score, Oklahoma 55, UTEP 14. Remember, next week, the Sooners take on Arkansas State. Call your local cable operator and order the game early and avoid the rush. You've been watching coverage of the University of Oklahoma on pay-per-view, produced by Fox Sports Net. Adios, everybody. Yeah.